Blog Talk Radio. You're tuned in to N5D Radio, the next dimension in radio, where we bring you the hottest, in-depth, spiritual, metaphysical, esoteric conversations and news. Get ready for spirit, body, and mind to expand in three, two, one, 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 one. Hello, everyone. Uh, Namaste. My name is Greg Prescott, and welcome to N5D Radio, coming to you from the 99% Quartz Crystal Sands of Sarasota, Florida. I am your host, Greg Prescott, from N5D.com, and tonight we're going to be raising the vibration of the planet, galaxy, and universe. And right now, we have astrologer Jim Delacoli with us, also known as Panther Jim 1995 on YouTube. So without further ado, I'd like to bring in Jim Delacoli. Hi, Jim. Welcome back to N5D Radio. Hey, Greg. Uh, how are you? Glad to be back. I'm doing great, but I'm hearing this incredible feedback going on. Do you hear it? I, I have no. It's perfect on my end. <laughs> as long as no one else is hearing it, we're good to go. Um, it's just you. <laughs> Jim, can you tell our listeners a little about yourself before we get started? Uh, yeah, I uh, started my life, my first 35 years, um, lived a pretty normal life, and uh, things went downhill in my 35th year of life, went through divorce a low time and got introduced to astrology and uh, spent the next maybe six months to a year trying to uh, disprove it, and I couldn't do it. And since then, that was 2001, I uh, used astrology very effectively in my life, um, not only for my, you know, myself, my family, but my friends and, and you know, any acquaintances by word of mouth. I try to be quiet in my advertising. Um, you've done very well for me to do that, but uh, since then I've been doing astrology and it's just opened my eyes to a world that uh, I would have never guessed was there, um, and it's been, been kind of an unraveling of the truth, so to speak, since then. Before we jump into the show, my former co-host, Kendra Gilbert, wanted me to tell you, please give Jim my regards and let her let him know how highly I think of him. Oh, well, tell her thank you. I, I think the world of her as well, so... I'll do that. Uh, she was an awesome co-host, and now she's going to school for nursing. So everyone here at N5D wishes her well, and we all miss her here on N5D Radio. So we have a lot of material to cover. Jim, are you ready? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I hope we can squeeze it in. All right. Well, recently we saw Jupiter and Venus align in the sky to where some people believe this was the Star of Bethlehem. What are your thoughts about this alignment? Uh, very possibly. Um, they the history I've got on it, though, was Jupiter and Saturn together in the sky. But Venus and Jupiter are so close together that uh, that's very possible because it was in the evening sky and definitely visible as I was, um, people that follow me, I was talking to them and trying to get them to see the two as they came closer together. So I definitely think we're in a time where the awakening and the rising up of the truth is, is here, and that's why everybody's so adamant and, and becoming so aware of, of their surroundings. Now, we have a lot of crazy things going on in the cosmos as well as here on planet Earth. Here in the United States, Operation Jade Helm begins on July 15th. We spoke about this uh, last week, and we both agree that it's more of a distraction than anything else. But what do the astro- astrological charts have to say about it? I, was, I always look at the fire signs, Greg, for you know some type of like um, military operation or um, you know, the, the ability to try to uh, manipulate through force or through just sheer will. And uh, when we get into, I, I know it starts on the 15th, and you and I were talking a little bit about that, and that we have a new moon um, in Cancer, and the Cancer is a sign that the moon rules. And so what I was looking there is if you want something to last or something to happen, that you know you can like plant a seed and and really nurture something that's a great time to do that and you know that's what my video is going to be about on the new moon is uh just nurturing that which you believe so to to put a seed out there uh they're doing a great job um of planting that and and, uh, getting us to you you there greg okay yeah i'm here i I have a, a different headset okay Okay, um, good. I I, little, we're good. Is that better? Okay, I caught a little bit of echo, but it's gone now. Yeah, and that that's it. The echo is completely gone, and uh, <laughs> we got everything set. Right, There's something, <laughs> some issue with my uh, other headset, but now everything's perfect. 
Uh, so there's a new moon in Cancer coming on July 16th. What do we need to know about uh, this new moon uh, that's in a water sign? Yeah, that that uh, the new moons I always talk about putting out into the universe. So to have Jade Helm start there at that time, they're wanting to put something they can have a lasting effect kind of uh, deep in our psyche because the moon rules our past and our ability to our intuition and kind of where we go to when we – you know, we are when our logic's uh, not making sense, and we want to go to that place that we kind of survive from an instinctual perspective. That's what happens. So that's what they're trying to do here, um, and it can have a lasting effect there. Um, but I don't think that's their master plan. I just think that's part of the, you know, a big part of um, what they're trying to just layer in here as we move move forward. So it's all about intentions. But I mean, conversely, we can use the intentions for our own betterment. Absolutely, and that. And that's, you know, what I've been teaching is who are you? What are you? Find your truth. That way when they start these things or try to do these things, uh, you don't fall for this. You don't, you know, you don't just like a sheep just go along just because uh, that's what you were told or that's what everybody else is doing. You're on your own path here. And and this moon is going to be just as powerful. They're trying to do that. I'm begging everybody to, you know, who are you? What are you? What matters at the core of who you are? Get after that, you know, and hopefully it's, Mm out of all the mainstream media issues and, and where they've led us with the money things and the banking and the, you know, uh, mm-hmm. war. Hopefully it's away from all those things because that's so far from what we truly need just to live. So what kind of uh, energies specifically should we be focusing on with this new moon, or does it not matter? Um, I, well, I definitely think um, – can I back up a minute and just talk about how we got where we are today? I guess um, sure. I'll do that in a little bit, but I think it's perfect timing for that now. Um, mm-hmm. In astrology, everything's cyclical. All the planets travel at different speeds, and we have some major planets that have um, transited to the, and getting ready to transit uh, to signs that are going to really help us um, like change and bring about uh, our like spirit and the force that's within us to bring alchemy to our lives and to the lives around us. Um, we have uh, Jupiter's going to leave uh, the sign of Leo, which it's been in for the, the last little over a year, and it's going to go into Virgo um, on the uh, 11th of August, and that's going to bring us chance to um, take what we've tried to change in this past year and the awakening that we've had and try to start perfecting that. So that's going to help us there. Saturn's going to go into sign of Sagittarius in the middle of September. It's been in Scorpio since um, the, when we moved, when we were in the galactic center at the end of 2012, and the Mayan calendar supposedly ended. Saturn was in Scorpio, and we were having to like really dig down and find the truth, find that was that which was hidden, and we've had to do that up until now. And now the quest is going to be, Greg, is just take what we've seen and learned and picked up on and all this truth that's that's entered into our world since uh, the end of uh, December 2012 and move us forward into a direction that now that Saturn's going into Sagittarius in, in September, we're going to start like changing now the world as we move forward because it's about our new philosophy and the work we've done. Um, and then lastly, you and I talk about Pluto all the time. And that's the big mm-hmm. changer here. Saturn and Pluto have been working with each other, and Pluto is in the middle of Capricorn, which is the sign that rules yes. all things physical. And Pluto destroys anything that's not healthy or within nature's laws. And we're seeing that like rapidly just coming apart at the seams. And I think that's a lot we're going to talk about tonight is where these middle of the the planets in the middle of our galaxy uh, are moving to new signs, and then Pluto's really like putting doing a number on us to reveal the hidden of just all the crap that's been going on um over these mm-hmm. last 200 plus years. Oh yeah, <laughs> trust me, we're definitely going to be talking about that. There's a couple things I want to get to beforehand. We have okay. a blue moon this month. Can you explain to our listeners what a blue moon is and how it affects us or if it affects us? Well, you know, um they they name the moons based on um you know, of course, the appearance or that which has been um, that which, you know, you look in the sky and say, why is it different? So um, I, uh, we have a um, a blood, I'm sorry, a blood moon is what I was thinking of, Greg, not the blue right. moon. So sorry about that. Um, yeah, the blue, blue moon, moon is like, two full moons. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, 
the, the, I was let me I'll do the blood moons. I'll get back to the blue moon. The blood moons are okay. when we have an eclipse, a total eclipse coming, um, and they they seem to be as I, as I looked way more effective in the uh, cardinal signs. And so when we have one of those in a in a cardinal sign, um, it seems like that the eclipse. They always it's the universe's way of saying you're ready for change. It's time. And then we want to look at. Uh, where it's fallen by sign, and a cardinal sign is us to take action. So an eclipse is a universe pushing us forward and saying, hey, let's go, let's move forward, um, and let's take uh, and, and bring what the, uh, bring these the human race up to speed. Uh, so the eclipse is going to shock us and move us in a direction. The key is for us is to know that we will be left better uh, than we were found, but we just have to de- do our part. And uh, t- and advance as far as we can because we can skip a few steps here if we really get moving um, on this. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And a blue moon would be. Um, and and then a blue moon is the um, two uh, where we have uh, two full moons that fall in uh, the same month. So we uh, mm-hmm. and I think it's the second one. Yeah, it's the second one that we yes. like uh, look at and experience. And so, you know, what happens is it falls in a different sign, but it's in the same month. And so, mm-hmm. uh, it, that's a month that's going to have a lot more activity, a lot more action, and a lot more to do, um, a lot more for us to do. Because at a full moon, we want to look at and uh, take action because the moon and sun are as far apart as they can be. And so, this is a month where there's going to be a lot of activity. You're going to probably be inundated with a lot of things, but knowing this prior. To coming into the month, you're going to be ready and prepared, and hopefully, uh, you know, uh, plan and have as as much time to handle the changes or the the energies that come to you, uh, best best possible wherever those moons fall in your chart. Mm-hmm. Now, I believe I that apologize. this is I was thinking the second blood moon, Greg. That's no, that's Sorry. okay, Jim. I believe that this <laughs> is the second time we've had a blue moon this year, right? Yeah, I think it was in March. That's what I was trying to look back Exactly. On. I think March yeah. we had two full. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, and, and just, you know, it's heavily, just a lot of activity then in the uh, in the life. Of, as everybody's probably seen early, early July, everybody I knew was having trouble. So, um, you know, just it just you just get ramped up with the energies, and then there's a lot more you have to handle. So I like full uh-huh. moons because I think when you take action, uh, whether the result is good or bad, I, th- I think that you you realize that oh I'm doing something repetitive here because I know the outcome and when you, take, when you do something you're heading down a new path I think there's newness there so um, I like the full moons I like the action and, and I think the awareness is easily you know you're easily perceived on where you need to go and what you need to do. Well, speaking of the moon, in your opinion, what is the moon's effect on consciousness? In astrology, we, you know, it's it's a it's a energy that really rules heavily in the chart. We go to that point wherever the moon fell at birth because we feel like that's your past. Uh, the moon kind of is your container of all that you know and kind of your arsenal to go back to. So you always try to get back there when you you need to feel safe or you need to get to kind of where you feel you uh, belong or w- what you know the most. And so the moon is is significant there. That's why I. Uh, do the new and full moons, Greg. I kind of follow those in my life and try to keep everybody aware when they are. So um, when when things occur, they're ready and it, it, you know they can use their arsenal and, and best uh, attack the situation. Mm-hmm. Do you think that the the moon is an artificial satellite? You know, I, I actually, uh, as I look at this, it's. Uh, I actually think it is, Greg. I think it was put there. And, Me too. Um, yeah. Okay. So, I don't know how deep you want to get in that, but I do think that it was put there, and I do think that um, it, it weighs heavy on uh, like where our mind wanders and why we daydream, mm-hmm. and just the effects that it has on us. Absolutely. Oh yeah. I mean, we could go really far down the rabbit hole on that one. Um, who do you think mm-hmm. brought it here? <laughs> it's got to be. I, I I do think most of us were connected to that, and I do think it was another species, so to speak, that brought mm-hmm. it there. And it's just it's almost like we're being tested or we're being watched over uh, yes. just to see how we re- react and interact with each other. Do you think it was a benevolent or malevolent species? You know, uh, the days that I 
look back and long for things. I think it was benevolent uh, in a sad way, but in the days I'm happy and remind, remember the things, <laughs> in a, it's in a good way. So I, I really wonder if uh, it doesn't all have to do with the galactic center and our 26,000-year cycle and that, you know, maybe as a species it's uh, negative for a certain period of time and positive for a certain period of time. But, you know, mm-hmm. I, I go back and forth between that. So. A lot of people believe that the moon and Saturn are tied in together, kind of, uh, you know, locking our consciousness within, uh, you know, the, our, our solar system here, and really, you know, yes. capturing souls. And I mean, it, there's so much um, stuff that you hear about it, and I, I don't know what to believe, what's the truth or not. But you know, I always listen with an open li- mind, and I always try to question everything and tell people to use their own discernment. Uh, do you know of any sure. connection between the moon and Saturn? Uh, there's a big connection astrologically. Uh, the moon, from our perspective, transits the zodiac tw- in just over 29 days. Saturn is just over 29 oh. years. Yeah. So I think they're heavily connected. The difference is, it, it, you know, is if let's say somebody came to your house, Greg, for two and a half days, you could probably have fun the whole time. But that's the moon transiting a sign. But if they come with the Saturn. Uh, transit time is two and a half years be a little more difficult so the moon is fleeting as far as what we're learning saturn when it comes through a sign it's two and a half years and it's getting ready to come into sagittarius and we're going to learn those sagittarian things um as is the transit of saturn happens you know i was it just came to me that i wonder if the moon is an artificial satellite from saturn i i I, that's what I think it is, Greg. If you want to get down to it, that's what I think it is. I think Saturn yeah. and Jupiter connect us with uh, the universe, and I think that Saturn and the moon are heavily connected. Heavily uh-huh. connected, absolutely. You know, a lot of people are beginning to see how there's a lot of truth hidden in the movie uh, The Matrix. Would you agree? You know, and I still haven't watched it, but absolutely, the clips I've seen and the comments people have made. Uh, absolutely, I think the matrix definitely uh, there's definitely correlation there. Um, I did want to say the correlation between Earth and Jupiter, right? We have the Moon and Saturn, 29 uh-huh. days and 29 years. Well, it mm-hmm. takes the Earth 12 12 months to go through the zodiac, and it takes Jupiter 12 years. So there's a connection. The Earth is connected to Jupiter, and the Moon's connected to Saturn. If that makes sense. It uh, it makes perfect sense, and you know, as, as we all know, everything is interconnected, whether it's above or below. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, and the more you connect the dots, you do realize that there's something much deeper and stronger going on, and it's up to us to really interpret and figure out exactly what that is. And astrology mm-hmm. really helps a lot, and when you can put it into terms of these cycles, you know, that we're talking about, it makes a lot more sense. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now, on In5D.com, I've written a lot about Pluto being in Capricorn from 2008 till 2023, and we touched on this briefly already. But for those who don't know about Pluto and Capricorn, Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008. Pluto's known as the destroyer and will tear down everything that's not in humanity's best interest. The last time Pluto was in Capricorn, was during both the French and American revolutions. When Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008, we saw a collapse of the banking system, uh, with the exception of the two big-to-jail banks, uh, who received huge, huge bailouts that should have gone to the American people instead of these criminal banksters. My prediction is that by 2023, we'll see a collapse of money, government, and religion. And we're already seeing signs of that in all three areas. As of this date, we're officially at the midpoint of Pluto and Capricorn. So, Jim, what do you see happening from now until 2023 with this alignment in regards to money, government, and religion? We... um and by the way, I think you're going to be spot on with what you just predicted there. But we look at us in astrology, we watch the planets as they uh, – there's 30 degrees in every sign. So we watch the first 10 degrees, 0 through 10, and then 11 through 20. And then we watch, of course, 21 through 30. And, and the first 10 is like a discovery, 0 to 10. And that's that's what happened to us from 08 to uh, 
you know, uh, just what the uh, middle of 2014, um, we had to like discover that which was no longer uh, incongruent with um, or congruent with nature. And so the ugliness, the banking, the governments, the suppression, you know, the truth about really how things are, and that the whole physical world, as as maybe most of us thought. It doesn't even exist, and and that we you know we had to kind of undo that. So you have to do that in zero through ten degrees. And now that we're in the middle of the second phase, um, eleven through twenty, uh, eleven through twenty is where all right. Now we've got now um, it's more than just conspiracy theory, and it's more than just you know I think now we know coincidence. So, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. And so once the soul becomes aware of something, you can't go back. There's just no way. So we're in that. We've gone through zero through. Ten and we're now we're awake and most uh, a lot of us are awake not not all of us but we're in that eleven through fifteen eleven through twenty sorry right in the middle of that phase where it's we gotta take action now but it's uh, uh it's very like um uh knowledgeable or wise in the action that we're taking because we we there's no longer the discovery phase we know this stuff's going on so you don't waste an energy there now you're working on now where are we going to go with this and and you know what can we do and how bad is it you're doing those things so you take action you back off a little bit and so we're there right now and, and we're we got to we got to build a base and that's what we're working on we got another 5 degrees to do that and uh we're we're starting to see that there's holes or holes in the dam or or, or there's cracks in the dam and that now we mm-hmm. now we need to really start going so guys like you and me are just we're just out telling the truth now it's not a matter of look what i found wow check this out how bad is that we're not doing any of that anymore we're just rolling now and it's time mm-hmm. to do that and, and so yes. the awareness is is less of you know i'm a conspiracy theorist or you're a conspiracy theorist the awareness is like yeah that's going on what are we going to do because we can't it mm-hmm. just can't sustain itself and so you were saying we need to take action. What kind of what kind of action specifically can we take? Um, the the thing I've been building about the uh, on the most is just how powerful as individuals we are, and and start to um, start in the, in this middle phase. What we really got to do is we had to become aware to kind of see what was going on and that we were maybe mesmerized. Now that we're not mesmerized anymore, now you turn back inward here um, and look at and understand just who you are as an individual, how powerful you are, and how you can operate from your own perspective without all this junk in the outer world that they've uh, pushed upon us, that we've allowed them to push upon us. And once Mm -hmm. we start realizing that we, like you and I can connect, or I can connect with somebody, you know, 100 miles away or 1,000 miles away, we're probably thinking the same thing. Once we all get on that same page, which needs to happen these next five years, this thing can turn in a moment because everybody's going to, you know, not everybody, but the masses will start to understand that we yeah. don't need a cell phone to connect. We don't need a television to learn. We don't. We have mm-hmm. what, within us what we need, and this is mm-hmm. the next phase, and this is the empowering phase. So when we get to that 21 to 30, now the empowering happens, and we, we change the world as we know it. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of that, too, will happen without us having to do anything. I can see that all these systems imploding upon themselves, and then the, uh, all these different factions fighting amongst themselves. For example, you know the Rothschilds versus the Rockefellers, and certain mm-hmm. banks, you know, going after each other and trying to, you know, have the ultimate power. I just see them honestly turning on each other. Now, uh, recently there um, has been a uh, a contactee. His he, his name is Corey Good. Uh, G-O-O-D-E, and uh, he'll be uh, doing a show on Guyam TV tomorrow night with David Wilcock. But what Corey Good was saying is that there's a lot of data dumps that are going to be happening soon and that a lot of these um, people who are going to testify against those who have worked in humanity's best interest are being held off-planet right now for their own safety and that once these data dumps come out, it's it's going to make people's jaws drop for the most part and reveal the truth of all the oppression, tyranny, um, suppression of technology. Um, all this stuff is going to be coming out against those who have been doing this for literally millennia, but, you know, that are still living. And they're going to be fleeing. They're going to be trying to leave the planet, so on and so forth. Uh it, 
I think we're going to see this this massive implosion, and there's not a lot we really need to do except, you know, when when chaos does happen, and of course, at the highest degree of Freemasonry, they have the motto at the 33rd degree, Ordo Ab Chaos, which means order out of chaos. That's what mm-hmm. they want, but you know what? Chaos can be a good thing because it shows us that it's all collapsing. Everything needs to collapse so we can rebuild it back in humanity's best interest, but what people need to remember, number one, is to stay grounded throughout the whole ordeal. And number two, to help your neighbors and friends and family and be there for people. And despite the chaos, always take the high road. Try to do the right thing. Yes. And um, and, and in the end, uh, you know, uh, love matters. Uh, and that's it. I mean, so and that and it was everything you just said, doing the right thing, helping each other. That's where it's all at anyway. I mean, that's where. Uh, this thing builds, and that's the base of all this. That's where everybody's benefiting right now. Is they're benefiting off the goodwill of people, and we've got to take that back, and, and we've got to go. So I don't, I don't think we have to change it, Greg. I just think what we have to do is, uh, I think we're in a twenty-six thousand year cycle in the galactic mm-hmm. center. That it's just a matter of we have all our answers: good, bad, past, present, future. It's just a matter of us just tapping back into what we truly know. And, you know, that's really where the work has to be done. I think, like you said, it's, it'll unfold as it needs to. We may have to put a little force to it, but I, I don't think it's going to be, you know, have to be monumental other than the fact that just realizing who you truly are from the core. That's where that's mm-hmm. where the real growth is going to come from. So. Well, you mentioned a 26,000-year cycle. Which you're, what you're referring to is the precession of the equinoxes. Can you explain what that the, the precession of the equinoxes really means? Yeah, it's uh, kind of where uh, where we go through our um, uh, solar our galaxy, and and you know we uh, we go through right now where the the, the section ages. of um, mm-hmm. yeah, and and it's awareness and awakening to the truth and what is and and what's happening uh, from the bigger picture perspective of a twenty six thousand year versus a you know a, a twenty six year or twenty nine year where, where, where we have a chance to put it all together. We all, all of us, uh, in the last 45 to 55 years, uh, we're we're advanced. All those, the slower moving planets are in advanced signs, and we have the knowledge. Uh, it's just getting back to it. So uh, that's why there's so many distractions. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind we wouldn't have all this technology and all these distractions if we didn't have the knowledge to realize that we don't even need that stuff. Um, so you know, we're here. We're at the preface. It's time, and really, it's just a matter of awakening from within. I'd imagine that those in power probably thought that the computer would be similar to any other f- form of media where mm-hmm. they could use it against us. I don't think they really realized how powerful it is on our behalf until recently where they're trying to, you know, <laughs> place, you know, cut off our connections or, you know, right, limit right. the data or whatever. And I've actually experienced, I don't know if anyone in the chat room or who is listening has experienced a throttling of uh, internet connection, but uh, there's been times where I've been running almost as slow as um, as a dial-up. Have you experienced that? I have. It's been a. Uh, I've had to run uh, a lot of scans and try to get stuff off. Seems like every day I'm. It's just slowing down more and more. So I'm. You know, I keep try to keep the computer clean and running the scans. So it's been a frustrating for the last 45, 60 days for me. So at what point does the precession of the equinoxes start over again? Uh, did that happen on December 21st, 2012, or has it not yet begun? Um, I, I think that, yeah, we were kind of in a reset. We were at the center of the galaxy, and I think that, um, you know, where, where Saturn was headed, you know, getting close, it was in a sign that said, let's let's, you know, let's really get down to what's going on and let's start digging it up and looking at it and so yeah i think we're at a reset point and it's it's time to take that 13,000 year cycle through where things are like the golden age and let's let's do things the right way and let's move forward and let's handle um things as they should be handled from perspective of everybody's um considered and it's good over the long haul so i hate to say mm-hmm. what's right but it's just it's just what we know you know and and there's no manipulation then. You just you work it as it should be worked, and, and we just move forward. Okay. What did uh, December 21st, 2012 mean to you? 
to me it was I think that the awakening is like the the doors open the awakening was here now and it was um because it's you know such a long haul it wasn't like you wake up and it's over but if, mm-hmm. if we go back to that date and come to today I mean just look how much it changed look how how much we had to fight before that to talk about the things we we um we're learning and fig- picking up and figuring out, and and now look. I mean, I, there's people everywhere. I, I I encounter them every day, and they're so different than they were back in 2008, 2010, 2012, um, and even yesterday. And so everybody's really awakening. And it's, the conversations are. I mean, we can just start midstream. We don't even need to explain things anymore. And I like that a lot because I. That's where I feel like we needed to get it. wasn't You didn't have to start from ground zero with everybody. You just start talking like, yeah, I've been seeing that, or I picked that up, or I watched that. And people are just way more aware, and so much less aware of what the mainstream's doing, which is where we need. I know that when I first learned about 2012, it was back in 2007, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking, you know, at the time my daughter was, you know, what 13 years old or so, and I'm thinking, oh no, you know. <laughs> Because, right. of course, the first thing you read, for the most part, on the Internet is going to be some fear-laden bullshit. But, yeah. uh, you know, and that's what I read, at the end of the world kind of thing. And that's what prompted mm-hmm. me to uh, really do a lot of research into 2012. And I learned so much about how it was not the end of the world. And it encouraged me to build my first website to show to the world it it's not the end of the world. And it's actually a right. good thing, you know, right. and... uh and then 2008 rolled around, and I remember uh, <laughs> after after the uh, the banking collapse, except the too big to jail banks. Um, when the banks collapsed, I, I made a video in 2008 called uh, "Banking Collapse Announces the Beginning of the Golden Age." And to this day, people still give me shit for that video, but yet. It's true, honestly, in my own mind, in yes. my heart, that yes. that was the beginning of the end, and I think that should have been what led us to a, a much bigger change in 2012. But yes. it was just delayed. Sure. Yes, you, you're exactly right. That was the moment that the awakening uh, was there for all of us, and people think, oh, we had to, we had to bail out, we had to. No, we didn't. Uh, we needed to let it collapse and realize the mistakes that were made. But so now it's just going to be a little harder of a lesson because now more, even more money's been borrowed and even more manipulation. And now, I mean, now the manipulation's so bad. If we went back to '08, they wouldn't just uh, walk up TV and just say uh, we're going to hold interest rates, and then it, the market goes crazy. Uh, there would have to be something physically happen to make that happen. Now they can just walk up and say whatever, and then. You know, Greece uh, settles. Okay, good. Everything's going back. Yeah, to I couldn't believe but it's that. Not. They're, yeah, they're never going to pay it back. Everybody knows it, so nope. they're just delaying and stalling. And and what they know mm-hmm. is that they can wear you down if if, if you, they can do it over a period of time. And that's Saturn itself. You know, just yep. one step at a time. They can wear you down, but what they don't understand is people have awakened the fact that they're not going to wear us down because we expect these things now. You know, we expect the delays and the manipulation and the lies and the and so you know it's it, it we don't we don't go to the end of each spectrum on when those things happen anymore so we're not wearing ourselves out mm-hmm. now i have a feeling and i'm not sure if you agree with this or not <laughs> probably you do because we agree on so much <laughs> yes we do but uh <laughs> you know i think i look at larger scales and cycles of time um i think it was ivan stein Igor Stein, what's his name? I, I think it's Ivan Stein. Um, he was saying that there's this 103,000-year cycle where mm-hmm. basically there's a reset that happens and uh, we where we go into an ice age for approximately 70, 80,000 years, and then we start coming out of the ice age, and for the last 12,000 years or so, we have a climate like we have now. Now, mm-hmm. from what I understand... There's something going on with the sun that's going to potentially put us in another ice age relatively soon. Have you mm-hmm. heard anything about that? And would I that be part heard, of the reset? Uh, definitely possible. The planet's on a cycle is on the same cycle that that we're on. It just lasts longer than us. We're we're 80 years, you know, about mm-hmm. life average, and the planet, of course, is so much older than that. But Yes, I have read about that, and I'm very interested in these cycles because, um, you know, we're watching and they're trying to pull this um, uh, global warming stuff on us. But this is the yeah. cycle of the sun, and, you know, it's just, 
I read in 2030 it's going to start, and that, that would not surprise me at all. There's periods to, to do things and be active, and there's periods to rest, and the sun's just got to rest a little bit. I, I see no problem with that kind of cycle, that kind of cyclical uh, uh, event happening here on Earth. None at all. Well, what about Nemesis? Have you heard of that? I have not. Nemesis, I believe, is some huge asteroid or meteor that's supposed to be here in the year 2030. I I don't have the number in front of me, but they say that, once again, could be a possible reset. And, uh, you know, you look at humanity and you look at Mother Earth, and I, I couldn't blame her if she welcomed an opportunity if people don't choose to awaken in the very near future. And I, I right. and I'll say that out of fear. I say that out of love for her. Yes. Well, you know, it's um, it's always interesting to have conversation about recycling and things like that, but who mm-hmm. who is uh making the packaging? You know, and I always look at that as who's making the cars with that material and and you know, who's making all the uh the computers and the you know, this, in this throwaway society, somebody's you know yes. that, that had to get started somewhere, and 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 so mm-hmm. they they work off numbers to succeed by selling, so not by you know fixing, and so really you got to start there, in my opinion. Quit pointing the finger at the at the individual. Um, everybody needs to do their part, but what about the people that are, you know, it's getting allowed somewhere along the line, and, and they're the ones making it. So. Mhm. Definitely. Uh, what's that called? Called controlled obsolescence. Absolutely. Where certain things break down, you know, you buy a washer or a refrigerator and it breaks down within two to three years. It's it's programmed to essentially break down on you. Correct. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. But, yeah, I, I do believe that there are resets all throughout history. I'm greatly hoping that there is not one any time in the near future. But, you know, when you look at, for example, out-of-place artifacts – in Illinois, there was a they they were drilling, and I forgot how far down they were, maybe 400 feet into the ground. And when they mm-hmm. when they pulled the the drill bit out, they found a coin that they couldn't identify from any other civilization. So what it sounds like to me, I was watching, I believe, the History Channel, or one of those documentary channels years ago, and they were saying that all it would take is about a thousand years, and you wouldn't recognize that there was any signs of civilization on this planet. Everything would basically decay and crumble to where you wouldn't know anything's here. So if they had found a coin that they couldn't decipher was from any known civilization, how many times have they done this reset? And who is actually at the top of the pyramid, which I recently wrote an article on in 5D, who is at the top? But who, what malevolent being keeps doing this and forces us to, to do this over and over and over again? Right. Um, and I always I look at, Greg, I, I feel like I've been here before. and um, mm-hmm. A lot of our communication now goes from my computer to yours, and we're on the you know, Internet right now. There's nothing like physical that's left, if that makes sense. So uh, we're putting all our data and everything on the on the internet. So yeah. as as you get closer to the end of civilizations, I think this is what happens. The uh, the technology takes over and everything becomes non physical, and it's hard to pinpoint just what happened at the at the end, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know, if there ever was, uh, you know, say a solar flare that took out satellites and we lost mm-hmm. electricity, well, we're screwed here. I know Michio Kaku brought up the point of where he said that a bunch of, uh, of uh, physicists got together and, and, and scientists, and they said that all it would take would be about $500,000 that they're asking for from the government to order the, all the transformers that they need in case there was a solar flare that knocked out all of our electricity because all the transformers would, would explode. And the government right. said, nope, but they'll spend you know billions of dollars on worthless wars and you know, yeah. and it, ignore you know our own safety with transformers or feeding the homeless and the starving, and you know it, it's just it, it makes you shake your head because you it, you start to realize as you go down the rabbit hole everything's backwards, upside down. We've been lied to from ev- from everybody, and whoever's at the top is not in our best interest. So, no. like I said, I had just recently wrote an article on who is at the top of the pyramid, and this is just my opinion. I believe, you know, a lot of people think, well, it's the Pope or the Queen or somebody like that, and it goes much deeper than that, because even if it's the Pope, 
you have the black pope who's above him who's pulling his strings just like in the united states you know people think the president's the most powerful person but when here's a great example when jimmy carter was president he asked to see the ufo files but the head of the cia at the time who was uh george herbert walker bush he said no so if the head of the CIA is above the president who's really running the United States. It's mm-hmm. just like the black pope who's who's running the, the, the Vatican. But there's somebody above him who's pulling his strings because every system is based on fear and control. So mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned, I, I believe that above him are lower level ETs like reptilians and dracos. Um, and you see this even on churches and stuff. You'll see those gargoyles that are, you know, reptilian yeah. and Draco-like gargoyles on them. Um, and above them, I believe, in my opinion, you you would have the the Anunnaki who are over them. But I think they're all warring with each other for control, just like the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. Above them, you have what's called archons that are mentioned in the Nag Hammadi texts which are these uh, basically invisible beings that suck your energy. And and that makes perfect sense when you think about the mainstream media, how the, you can't watch the 6 o'clock news without, and, and feel good about it because it's all based on fear, and, and just like the uh, newspaper and everything else. All systems of control are based on fear. So above the archons, ultimately, I believe that there's a Wizard of Oz type of malevolent being or race of beings that's controlling us that feeds off the fear while we're all economic slaves to a broken system of fiat currency. What are your thoughts? Um, uh, I would say that the fear-based um, ideology is uh, exactly what they feed off of. Who the they mm-hmm. are, you're way, way uh, more versed than I am on that. Um, but I think that uh, you hit the nail on the head that um, they pull off that end of the fear section, um, and and they're feeding off us. Uh, we're almost like farmed animals, and until we awaken and you know really understand who we really are, we we always have the choice to break free. But uh, we got to come to that understanding. So, you know, certainly we did not incarnate here to be economic slaves to a broken system. Work forty, fifty, sixty. I work. 12 to 15 hours a day, so I work a lot more than that per week. But most people are working two jobs, you know, 50, 60 hours a week. And, uh, you know, just to have a day off maybe because they have two jobs, some people are working every day of the week. For what? Mm -hmm. Is that why you came here? Is that your true divine purpose for being here? You know, none of us were supposed to be doing this. This is so messed up the way it is. And that's why I fight so hard for whatever's in the best interest of humanity. Now, one of my ideas I had, I have a, a video and an article called Global Unity Project, What the World Needs Right Now. And my idea was to replace all governments with a council of elders where they have to be completely transparent and you can vote on them every other week if you wanted to and each each week they have to say okay we did this this and this in in humanity's best interests you know that that'd be something i would volunteer for i would love to be on that uh, a board of elders to to work in humanity's best interests hey let's let's work on free energy let's work on teleportation let's work on you know uh, replicators that can materialize things out of thin air let's let's really make this a world that everybody would love to live in without the use of money or the need of being an economic slave what are your thoughts mm-hmm. uh my thoughts would are that be something? um oh my thought uh, when i read that I, you're right on the money and it's not because you and i are chatting tonight and we get along but to me you should not be in charge unless you ha- unless you have some age to you because you have to run cycles there's cycles of life itself that need to be understood whether you're a man or a woman i don't care which one um mm-hmm. and then for the people to have the right to at any moment um judge what works being done and if it's within the best interest of the people then if it's not mm-hmm. get them out but definitely exactly. have to be elder uh elderly because they're the wise ones they're the ones that have been through it they understand they're looking and understanding the cycles of life and so they have the knowledge. Uh, I'm not saying the young people do not, but they don't have the experience yet in the physical form. And that's where mm-hmm. we get. I mean, you look now, and you got all these young guys running companies, and it's just it's just out of order. It's it's not what's in best interest of, you know, humanity itself. 
Well, I'll tell you what, the young kids, and we've talked about this before with all the Pluto in whatever generations, but, you know, the young kids, they're going to be playing a huge role in the near future with technology and, and you know, helping to clean up this planet from all the crap that we've turned this planet into. Yes, they are. <laughs> Uh, you sound like me talking all the time. It's just like, what are we doing here? It's got to get fixed. So, mm-hmm. so in August, there's a meteor shower. What do meteor showers have in, in any kind of astrological significance? What do they bring? Yeah, I, I definitely think that, and because I f- we're in the galactic center, Greg, if we, if we could take a ball of clay and suspend it in air and just spin it where it wasn't sitting on a table, right? But if we could just Mm -hmm. have it suspended in air and we spun it, it would turn into like a disc, right? And uh, that's what I feel the galactic center is, is a disc of matter. And so anytime we come across where we have an opportunity for um, any type of activity from outer space, I I think it's an awareness and understanding and an advancement of uh, our, our knowledge and our ability to like see the bigger picture. So I always look at meteor showers or or any type of um, activity from outer space that we encounter that's not in the norm. I always look at that as an opportunity for us to advance, if that makes sense. So, um, and and not only that, though, just to just to thinking about uh, all that, it's like wow, there is stuff out there, and what is going on? So um, I, I do take those moments and those times to say, all right, what can where can I advance? What's going on? Um, and what possibly is the message here? You know, and 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 if nothing else, it's a great opportunity just to get outside, connect with nature, and yeah. ground, ground yourself. Yeah. Well, they, it, it's you know, you were mentioning they, you know, they, how. Go ahead. Well, they, they'd say wish upon a falling star, or they had mm-hmm. it right. I, you know, I think all those yeah. things are right. We just don't stop and just think about those things, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know, wishing upon a falling star, that's basically the law of attraction, putting your energy out there to the universe and declaring your intention. Yes, that's ex- that's absolutely yeah. true. Mhm. Now you were mentioning to uh you were mentioning that, you know, imagine the the Milky Way galaxy as a flat disk. A lot of people are talking about the flat earth. What are your thoughts on that? It's interesting um because I've traveled long ways in the ocean and uh, it's hard to tell that the, the thing is round. I mean, it really is. And, and so it, it's just interesting to read and try to figure this out. I, uh, you know, I look at it for, as a, from the perspective of, and, and this, I still haven't put it all together, but Mars, for example, um, when it's on the same side of uh, Earth uh, or the sun as we are, you would think that planet would be just unbelievably large. And then when it's on the other side uh, with the sun, and we could see it uh, maybe at uh, dusk or at dawn, you would think we wouldn't hardly be able to see that at all. So I'm kind of wondering about all this anyway, if that makes sense, because those planets have to be so far from us um, and never be seen. I'm talking about the ones that we can see from the physical plane, mm-hmm. if they're on the other side of the sun, um, you know, uh, dusk or dawn when we have the opportunity to see it. So uh, it's got me thinking. It really got me thinking, and I still haven't come to a conclusion yet. Well, you know, I've done a lot of research on that myself, and I have come to a conclusion. There are a lot of valid points, but just like Jade Helm, it's a distraction. Sure. That's my conclusion. Now, what my gut is telling me is that, you know, and uh, there's a video out there by Truth Truth Theoracy, um, and uh, he makes a good point. Like, if you were to take a, a syringe and fill it full of water, and just squeeze out one drop. It's it's a ball, it's 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 spherical shaped, and when you sure. look at everything that's in the sky, it's spherical, it's spherical shaped. So if I had to make a guess, everything is round or oval yeah. or oblong. But I, I you know I'm not going to put any more time or effort into the flat Earth debate because the bottom line is it really doesn't matter. It it's don't a matter. In the end. You're right. You're right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but it makes you think though about that. Was that Jim Carrey movie? What uh, what was that called? Help me out in the chat room if you if you can. Michelle, you and I watched it, and they're on a delay, so <laughs> we're not going to have yeah. the answer for five seconds. But um, well, it's anyway. He goes to the uh, the end of this movie set, and there's just this 
basically um, a stage setting where he was supposedly in an ocean, but he wasn't. And he was just a, an actor in a movie. Well, he was he was in a movie, but all the other people around him were supporting actors. So it, it, really, it really makes you think, movie? you know? Right, right, right. So I, I know the movie. I just can't think the name. Yeah, me yeah. either. I, I it, it's on the tip of my. T- oh, here it is. Truman Show. Yep. Yeah, Truman. Yeah, Thank I you, Tulia. <laughs> Tulia Hills uh, told us. Um, makes me think too about the sun. Now they say that outer space is freezing cold, and the sun is supposed to be really, really hot. So, how does the heat go through the space and hit the Earth without the space heating up? How can outer space be cold, our planet be warm, and the sun be hot, but everything in between is cold? Right. Between the sun and the earth. Uh, you know, they say a lot of us are reflective off, but uh, that sun burns pretty good on, if that makes sense. So um, I, I think that's a question that has to be answered and, you know, uh, truthfully answered to us, because I, I, I never have figured that out either. Um yeah, how those closer planets aren't just disintegrated if it's that powerful, if that makes sense. Do you ever wonder if everything up there is a hologram? I do wonder if it's a screen, absolutely. I do. Yeah, I mm-hmm. wonder if we're not looking at a big screen up in the sky. I do truly mm-hmm. wonder that at times. So, See, my, my opinion is that, you know, of course we live in linear time down here, but I believe that the controllers, or at least... The Anunnaki and maybe the Reptilians and Dracos, they're relying on astrology. That is their timetable. Uh, you know, obviously everyone at the top of power relies on master astrologers for certain mm-hmm. dates and alignments and stuff like that. But I think perhaps maybe that might be, you know, here we are, um, you know, at the end of the precession of the equinoxes and the An- Anunnaki allegedly you know, genetically manipulated mankind and they're said to be coming back, who knows. But maybe they're relying on astrology as a timetable for coming back or maybe our galactic family, who knows. Uh, What are your thoughts? I think we're definitely at a time when the realization of just how things truly are is here. There's too many advanced people here. There's too many um, people that are opening to just what is, and, and, you know, they've seen enough of, like, the manipulation. And so I, I definitely think we're at the time where the chance to figure it out is, is here. It's, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say it's not here all the time, but I think we're in that moment or that, that section of time that it, it, we must now figure out what's going on. And we are. I think we're doing a good thing. I think we're doing the right mm-hmm. things here. I do. I do, too. There's a full moon, super moon, on August 29th. And that's the first of three super moon, uh Yeah, that's the first of three super moons this year. The number two is on September 28th, and the number th- uh, three is on October 27th. What do these super moons mean generally? And is there any significance between one and the other? Is there any difference between any of these three super moons? Um, I, I, you know, I, I look at the total eclipse being the one that's. And that's the one that's going to be on 927 late at night, nine, early morning mm-hmm. 928. Um, okay. That's going to be a total eclipse and, and Aries. And that's going to be, you know, the end of <coughs> the end of the, or the last of the Aries Libra uh, eclipses. And then we're going to Virgo Pisces. And, and so Pisces is going to happen on 829. And, you know, what I'm looking at here is we're transiting from one time, one understanding to another as far as the eclipses go. So the awakening now is uh, from the self and the partnering to putting it all together and, you know, um, doing it in a way that uh, you can get other people to understand. So uh, in those moons, I think we just, there's definitely a, a, um, heightened energy and definitely there's times when awakenings can happen just in the moment. So you'll see a lot of people just totally change. A lot of people get whacked out during these times um, <laughs> because, they, you know, they, they just it, they, they can't put it together and they feel like they're at the end of the rope. So we see a lot of that. But in the end, I think the revelations that come uh, from just seeking the truth, these are our times when uh, us that are seeking the truth, we need to just be more aware, just let these things unfold. Mm-hmm. Well, 
<laughs> before we went on the air, I was I was talking to you about this, but we'll we'll bring it out in the open. I noticed a lot of people who seem to be in a uh, zombie-like state of mind. What could possibly attribute that in the astrology charts? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking at uh, Saturn being at the final stages of being in uh, Scorpio. It's been there since mm-hmm. the end of 2012 till now. We saw a little bit of Sag- a little taste of Sagittarius back at the end of 2014, early 2015, and then Saturn went retrograde. Now back into Scorpio. I think that's a big play. Uh, I also think a uh, big play. In what way Pluto would that in, be a big play? In what way would that um, affect people sorry, I'm sorry. being a zombie? Yeah, the uh, Scorpio, the sign rules the eighth house of death and rebirth. It's where we mm-hmm. must face like what we try to hide the most, what we're most afraid of. It's you know, it's it's where uh, you almost want to crawl into that fetal position to not have to deal with something. That's how, mm-hmm. that's what we've had to face from a Saturn transiting perspective. And so with that happening, it's time uh, to face what that which you uh, most fear or face that which you most don't want to face. Uh, mm-hmm. either, either or. The more you're afraid, the more you don't want to face it, the more it's in your face and, and the more that you uh, wig out. The less you fear, the less you, you know, uh, try to hide, uh, then, you know, in dealing with it, you, you move through it and you overcome an obstacle that, uh, in my opinion, Saturn's karma and you're you're through the soul, the sign that the soul is uh, rules, uh, Scorpio, and so you're dealing with karma over long periods of time. Many many lifetimes you've dealt and got stuck in this er- arena, and so now is your chance to deal with it. And those that aren't are wigging out, and those that are are like c- going through and realizing that th- maybe they've self imprisoned, or maybe they've uh, been their biggest manipulator uh, to themselves, you know, and and so. All that, all that is happening, and, and uh, adding to that, uh, Pluto's in, in uh, Capricorn. Those two signs are in each other's signs, so they're, they're mutual receptive here. And so Pluto and Saturn, these last two and a half, three years, have like been playing back and forth of revealing the ugly truth, and then dealing with you know what you most don't, what you would least like to deal with. And, and so mm-hmm. it's been going back and forth, and and so now we're coming to the point where that's going to end, and you're going to go to Sagittarius. Saturn's going to go to Sagittarius in September, and now you got to say, all right, what do I do with my newfound knowledge or new understanding, and what's my new outlook on things? And and that's where we're headed. So this is actually an opportunity for spiritual cleansing. Unfortunately, you know, a lot of people will either be going through or are going through right now what's called the dark night of the soul. Mm-hmm. And I've I've told people, you know, when you've hit that dark night of the soul, you know, look at it as something really positive because yes. it's only going to get better from that point forward. And as tough as it's been, everything is 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 going to just doors are going to start opening for you from that point forward. But yeah, yes. we all have had to go through it and I, I, I truly feel for those who are going through it right now. Many of us have gone through it. Some of us are still going through it right now. But it, it truly is a blessing. Um, what you were saying, too, I noticed a lot of times we end up mirroring whatever that it is which we fear within ourselves. And, and I see this a lot. I'll see this a lot on YouTube, on my videos that I post, or maybe on an article that I write. Somebody will be like, overly criticizing somebody else or myself, and they'll be really rude. But what you have to realize is that, once again, in psychology, we learn people will mirror that which they reflect within themselves. And, you know, so if, it's it's a lesson to be learned. If you've already learned that lesson, you can understand why they're doing it. But this, this is a lesson that, you know, if if you find yourself criticizing somebody else, look at yourself and... Try to figure it, what, out what it is within you yes. that's bringing out yes. that need to criticize someone else. Because you know Absolutely. everyone here is really you know we're ultimately just a spark of light of Creator Source. And uh, you know if you take away you know the economic subservience and the tyranny and oppression, this world would be amazing. But it's causing people to act crazy or become zombie-like. Have you noticed that people are more you know, not everyone, but certain people are just like zombies. Have you have you noticed that as well, Jim? Yes, uh, in my in my 
it's probably been over the last two and a half years since you know Saturn's been in uh, Scorpio, Greg. I'm noticing that um, there's less like, um, and I'm sad to say this, but and I'm talking about when I'm out into the world because I, I do uh, have a business that I, I operate out in the world. There's less like ownership and responsibility, and it's like that's I'm just following whatever they say, and I'm just. And so it saddens me to a degree because I'm seeing that get heightened as it's like, hey, I need a job, I'm stuck, I got this, I got that, and I'm just going to do what they say, and I'm just. And so it's it's uh, almost tragic to the point in some of these instances that, you know, these people feel like that they've lost their uh, self empowerment, their ability to self empower, and their ability to have the confidence and and just take control. And so, you know, I'm seeing that, and of course, astrologically, I'm always weighing that out, but. You know that's close to the end of you know when when people f- feel like they give up, uh, they get that moment. Then it's like I have nothing, uh, you know, I've given up. There's nothing left to lose here, you know. And that's when mm-hmm. I think that spark, like you were just talking about, hits. And so right. I see that it's sad, but sometimes it's there. Some people have to get to to awaken. But I'm seeing that a lot now um, as I as I move throughout the world. Outside. So Saturn in Scorpio has is playing a big effect on this uh, zombie effect. When does yes. Saturn leave Scorpio? Uh, September seventeenth, I believe. September seventeenth or eighteenth. Well, that's an that's interesting day. Be, yes, it's going to mm-hmm. be a very interesting day. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it's going to be the eighteenth, and it's going to be um, as. Uh, the moon will be exactly with that. I was looking that up for you and I uh, talked today, and the moon's going to be mm-hmm. with that. And so I really think um, when Saturn goes back to re- direct uh, August 1st, um, I really think, Greg, that people are going to start feeling and seeing that uh, there's – I don't want to call it hope, but there's like uh, an aliveness that's going to be starting to be felt everywhere. And the, the, I- the movement's going to start here. Mhm. I'd imagine, you know, if you know the the Roman Catholic Church was exposed for crimes against humanity, that would wake up uh, you know several billion people immediately. Yes. <laughs> it might take an I, event I really, like that. Well, I was uh you know, I didn't know if we how far we'd get here because I knew there was a lot of topics we were going to cover, but mm-hmm. when we get to uh, December of 2017, uh, I think the Catholic Church, or well, I don't want to say the Catholic Church. I think that a lot of the religions that have been stifling um, society, as as uh, we see it, uh, that's going to be the the true like awakening because Saturn's going to then get out of Sagittarius and into Capricorn. We'll have Pluto mm-hmm. and Saturn in Capricorn at that time, and I think uh, all this uh, wow. power, all this struggle, in, in all facets is going to have to be dealt with. And, and I think everybody knows that. That's why everybody's trying to take all they can up to then. Um, but really, mm-hmm. that to me, that's end end game there because when Saturn gets in Capricorn, the awakening uh, and, and the change is going to have to come because it, we have to face it. We'll have Pluto and Saturn there in Capricorn. That's that's exciting. Now, conversely, yes. the last... The last four days or so, I've had an amazing amount of energy, and I don't know if anyone else in the chat room has experienced this as well. I know that you mentioned that today. You've started feeling that too. Is there any yeah. particular reason for this? Yeah, I think we're, uh, we've are we got a, um, uh, a few planets that are uh, trying to move, and they're, and they're all going to change signs, and I think we're starting to feel that now um, as well as it, it, these eclipses are going to change. So I think that this moon in Cancer, which will occur on the 15th, um, new moon, is is really, and we're in that window now, uh, being the 13th. I always look at plus or minus three days. I think we're in the window of uh, true change that's coming. And this new moon in Cancer, because it's a cardinal sign, and, and you know, because the moon does rule Cancer itself, I think we got all this power that, uh, it's, we're going to start accelerating as things will start rapidly unfolding as we move forward. Um, it's always interesting to watch, like the Greek. Um, uh, they supposedly it's settled today, and the, if if everybody would just learn just the the basics of astrology, you'll see that all things happen either when the sun changes signs or a major planet changes signs, or when we have a newer full moon. 
I mean, it's that simple. They don't do anything. That's why we have movie premieres on like the 17th of April or, you know, and not, you know, like April 1st. Or They're doing that because the sun's changing sign or there's a new moon or there's a full moon. And, you know, it's just it's really interesting to watch them. They follow astrology so well and they do such a good job with when to do things and when not to do things that if everybody would just take the astrology and apply it to their own life, they would they would just catapult themselves forward and and things would get I think a lot simpler for for each of us if we just did that. Mhm. Now I'm going to talk a little about the age of Aquarius and when it begins or if it's already begun. According to Estelle Daniels, she said that the traditional classical astrologers will probably say that the age of Aquarius won't begin until 2300 or so. When the vernal equinox reaches the last star in the constellation Aquarius, other astrologers will say that the age of Aquarius will begin anywhere from 1910 to 2410, depending on when the vernal equinox point hits the place one second more than 30 degrees behind Aries. Now, according to the Gnostics, the age of Aquarius began on February 4th, 1962, because on that day, there was an interesting astronomical and astrological event. The planets Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, along with the Sun, the Earth, and the Moon, were all found in the constellation of Aquarius. In addition, a solar and lunar eclipse occurred, which was visible in some parts of the Old World. The cosmic event that transpired on that day is extremely rare. Such a congregation of plants, planets occurs only once every 21, 2,160 years, moving from one constellation to the next. Each time it happens, it marks the beginning of a new era or a new age for humanity. So, in your opinion, when does or did the age of Aquarius begin or began? I, <laughs> I think it was... Um, I, I, I go to February of 2005, Greg. We had... Let's see, one, two, I think we had seven, six planets in Aquarius at the time. One, two, three. We had five, sorry, and it was a new moon. And um, it was a pretty darn powerful time with everything either in Aquarius or um, Capricorn or Pisces or Sagittarius. They were all in latent signs except for um, uh, Saturn. So... I'm looking that I'm not saying it started February then, but I think it was in late 1900s to around then that I think that was the time, just because of what was going on, how many planets were piled up there as well. So, um, but again, we're all we're guessing because I wasn't here that many years ago, if that makes sense. And I, you know, I tried <laughs> to look at that and try to find, you know, what was happening, what was going on, and just see from a perspective astrologically. So I really liked it around the 2005 time, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Hope I said it in a way so, that makes sense. So. In your opinion, when does or did the golden age begin? You know, I I think we started it in the 60s, 70s, and and now we're you know we're like trying to take it to that next level, um, mm-hmm. because you know it it's just like a planet when it uh, goes back direct for the last time in a sign. Well, it doesn't hit the next sign right right away. It it some the slower planets take four or five months, and you know the faster ones do it fairly quickly. But when, when you'll see when a planet goes back direct and finally leaving a sign, you you really start seeing and having the effects of where this is headed. So, mm-hmm. you know, it don't happen necessarily on the day the planet hits the new sign. It, I think it happens more on the when the planet goes back direct and heads towards the new sign. Mhm. So. Autumn autumn this year falls on September 23rd, uh 6 days after a Mercury retrograde begins. Mm-hmm. So, what is the significance of the fall equinox and how does that Mercury retrograde play into it? Well, 23 is a pretty interesting number with the elite, so to speak. Um, uh, they like to use that number. and I, I just like to, to think outside the box, Greg, and I, I mm-hmm. looked at these uh, new moons. Um, and we got, we've got we got three new moons on the 23rd of the month. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the sun transits into... It's not new moon. Sun transits into the next sign on the 23rd day of the month. 
uh, it's Leo, Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio. That's um, you know that's one third of the year, and so really that tells me that uh, whenever uh, the sun goes into a new sign, and this one I don't this one I think is pretty powerful. As I was, uh, I felt really like goosebumps going all over. Um, mm-hmm. th- those are big times when the sun transit signs, and we got three of them going to transit on the 23rd of the month, or four of them, sorry. And I think that with with what else is coming, Saturn's change in signs, Jupiter's change in signs, um, uh, the outer three planets are going to be retrograde. Of course, you said Mercury's going to be retrograde in the middle of this. I really think mm-hmm. that um, you know this is uh, it, the fall time uh, in astrology. Uh, late late summer fall is a time to you know, you you nurtured whatever it is you want to um, create, and that now it's time to start taking it to harvest. And so that's why I think we're going to ramp up here, and uh, this stuff's going to start showing itself because the the true harvest is now coming. I think we're there with these four uh, sign changes at the twenty third day of the month. Um, I think we're going to see banking crumble. I, I definitely see the war finally. I think there's war already going on. I think it started earlier when we had indicators in the spring of war uh, at the uh, the um, ex- equinox, uh, spring equinox. Uh, but I mm-hmm. think this is like where everybody's going to see it. And I think this fall, this I mean, it starts ramping up on every level. And, and like you said, you're energetically feeling a lot better. Uh, that's yes. because I think we're ramping up and gearing up for what's coming. Hmm. Now, it's interesting. Uh, Michelle in the chat room reminded me, we went to see the movie Tomorrowland. Did you see that? I did not. I did not. I'm not a big movie guy. I apologize. So, what was that about? Don't apologize. I'm rarely watch the movies or anything on TV. Chances mm-hmm. are, if somebody says, "Have you seen the movie?" I'll cut them off right there and say, "No." <laughs> nope, didn't do it. <laughs> so My neighbors uh, get on any, me because I don't. I don't watch anything. That, how um, the date uh, September 23rd was mentioned in that movie. Um, and I was it, it just happens to be the uh number we were talking about so i i was mm-hmm. just curious what your thoughts might have been on that yeah well i look you know i always look at uh there's a beginning a middle and an end and and so you know i think later this month and the next week or so is the sun two weeks the sun changes signs we get this cancer moon of uh um, you know, I'm I'm like nurturing what I've started, and that's what's what's happening. And then I think the, the revelations are just going to just ramp up, and just we're going to get boom, 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 and that total eclipse. Then around the 28th of September, uh, the partial eclipse will be on the 13th of September. Well, that 23rd falls right in the middle there. So um, I think September is going to be one heck of a month here for revelations, for um, events, and for uh, you know just a lot of chaos to now, emerge. Atkins has been talking about an intergalactic wave of energy that's supposed to arrive on September 17th. And I know we just talked about September 17th. According to Atkins, many people are calling these energies Nibiru or Planet X. But Atkins doesn't believe it's an actual planet, but more of an energetic wave of transformational energy that he calls Wave X. How does the fall equinox play into these incoming intergalactic energies of Wave X that Dr. Atkins has been talking about? Yeah, I I think that this um, – let's go back to 2012 and the end of 2012, the Mayan calendar, late 2012. Um, this is when the, awake, the real awakening started to happen. I think the energy flow was coming um, at that time. Now, when we get into September of this year, this is like the first time since then that Saturn's changed signs for good, and it's going into Sagittarius. So uh, we experienced some energetic heightening and awareness uh, of things back in from 2012 till now, uh, digging up and, and finding what's been hidden. Now it's like, what are we going to do with it? So I think the heightening is because, you know, in the end, Sagittarius, where Saturn's now headed, is... Uh, in my opinion, it's where we create our own religion. So how we understand what we do with it, and and th- there's like highs there because of the awareness and the understanding and our ability to like put things together from a perspective that even maybe we didn't understand uh, happens now. And so that that's all of what's coming here is that as Saturn goes into Sagittarius, we're all going to like be able to start piecing this together. This is where the puzzle pieces start fitting real nicely. 
um, and mm-hmm. the sense we start making sense. And I think um, the heightened, uh, if you've ever been around a Sagittarian, a heavy Sagittarian, they're a lot of fun, and they seem to have a lot of energy, and they have a lot of beliefs, and they have a lot of like understanding that's like can be amazing at times and i think that's what we're all experiencing right now so yeah it's going to be heightened in the september i think it's really just we're we're going to be real serious about um uh the our awareness and what we're going to do with things so it it may be if it just you know a huge energy um like phase that we're going through to be just the awareness is going to be extremely heightened here mhm well it's funny you said that because uh michelle is a sagittarius yeah, she's the oh, fire she's sign. The I'm the air sign. Yeah, yeah. Something about those fire sign women. You know, my daughter's a fire sign, and uh, you know, I love them both. <laughs> oh yeah, they got a lot of spunk, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yep, indeed. Um, and one thing, once again, I just want to remind everyone that no matter what happens, please remember to stay grounded. The entire system that we live in and around is based on lies tyranny, oppression, control, and economic subservience to a broken system of fiat currency. And it all needs to collapse in order for us to rebuild it in humanity's best interests. Now, Jim, what can you tell us about the photon belt? Uh, Definitely um, a high-density area where I think uh, things and matter go to had to be sorted out. Um, and so when things are in the photon belt, I think they kind of have to get sorted through to where we can say and make something of it. The photon belt is extremely important. I think it holds this thing together, so to speak, as far as the inner planets, outer planets. And I think that um, there's a lot of things going on in there that uh, we should know or, or, or we're not being told. And I think that that's you know, really, we're going to find out a lot more about that in the next six, eight, ten years um, as Saturn goes through Sagittarius and into uh, Capricorn and then into uh, my favorite sign, Aquarius. I think we're going to start figuring that out um, and just how important that is. But it's almost like it's a it's a, a, a flow of things to keep uh, information, life, energies going um, from the universe to us, if that makes sense. See, I'm kind of wondering if the photon belt is some kind of transformational energy that would help bring about the awakening as well. And you know, I just you think of photons and light and the ability of light to transform. So, you know, is that possible? Absolutely possible. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I just think things have to go there and they get sorted out there, if that makes sense. So you could be that's spot on, in my opinion. Okay. Now, here we go. President Obama meets with Pope Francis on September 23rd. Then the Pope will address the U.S. Congress on September 24th. Then he's going to speak with, at the uh, United Nations during their annual gathering of, of world leaders on the 25th, which is basically a Bilderberg meeting with the Pope. What do you think that's all about, and what do the charts say about this, this meeting? Well, we've already brought up the 23rd, so, you know, we've addressed that. Saturn's going to go into um, uh, the sign of Sagittarius on the 19th. Uh, the mm-hmm. 23rd, the sun the sun goes into Libra. Um, and, uh, you know, that's where you must take your information, must take what you know, take what, uh, you know, your belief system is and, and try to share it with people. So, you know, all that. And, and, and then the moon's going to be in Aquarius. So, all that's extremely interesting to me, um, as well as the outer three planets are uh, retrograde. So uh, this tells me that they're going to try and push an uh, extreme lie upon us, and hopefully we believe mm-hmm. it. Plus, you and I talked about retrograde Mercury as well. So this is a big fat lie and a big fat. Um, this is going. This is going to be something that we're going to need to uncover whatever they're trying to do quickly, if that makes sense. My intuition and gut is telling me that. It's going to have something to do with, believe it or not, disclosure. Because um, they want be to control well. how this disclosure is going to come out, and they want to work it in their own benefit. Uh, moon's in Aquarius, so that's definitely something that's extremely possible. Sun and Moon will get along well during that time. So and you think about Aquarius. Definitely could happen. 
Yeah, yeah, and, and and you think about Aquarius being an air sign, you know, so air above yep. disclosure. Yeah. Yes, and That's and the point. sun also being an air sign of Libra. So, uh, I, mm. I, I I I'm always careful with Aquarius, but uh, that could definitely be something that's in the realm because it's outside the box. So and that mm-hmm. rules outer space as well. So no, absolutely, that that makes a lot of sense. Everybody throw that in there, absolutely. So why is Aquarius the water bearer an air sign? You know, um, the. Uh, Understanding um, that I have of Aquarius in the sign, and and you know the the water bearer is uh, Aquarius is like our ability to see into tomorrow and and the flow of things and the life, um, and so it brought the the gift of life itself. But um, Aquarius was the knowledge that we had to go get, um, and so they gave it the air sign because it was more of a communication and an understanding versus like um, you know water where you had to feel and and let it flow. So. Um, it was interesting they did that. I, it, to me, it, it, you know, it makes sense to a degree, but I'm, you know, it, it's way more of an air sign. It makes way more sense as an air sign than the water bear. Mhm. You've heard of the harmonic convergence, right? In 1987. Uh, yes. Where things were in Sagittarius. I don't have my ephemeris here with me to. I didn't know we were going to talk oh, about that. Okay. I apologize. I no, 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 no. Actually. Actually, I, 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 there was a point I wanted to make out of it that okay, has okay. nothing to do with that year. But uh, okay. one of the founders of that was uh, Jose Arguez, the, the late Jose mm-hmm. Arguez. And I thought he was a wonderful man. He passed away several years ago. Um, but he was the guy that went to Lord Pacal's tomb. And he said that the most important thing that he learned there is that we need to live without time. I never wear a watch, but, you know, I look around and I see so many people wearing them. Um, I could care less what day it is or what time it is, you know, even though, you know, there are certain things like the radio show. I I better damn well be here (laughs) for when I'm on the radio. (laughs) But he said, yeah, yeah. Um, But what he said was that he, he was, he thought that one of the best things that we could do is go to a 13 moon calendar. What are your thoughts on that? Because it's all in yeah. harmony. It's in perfect na- yeah. uh, harmony with nature. What do you think? I agree 100%. Uh, there's 13 moons every year. We just uh, That's where we get the blue moons and, uh, you know, where we have two in a month. And no, I, I couldn't agree more. That should more be our calendar than any any of the uh, things we have in place right now. How would that affect the zodiac and astrology? Um, it, yeah, it wouldn't affect it at all it? just because of – no, it would not affect it at all because the, we just uh, – each year uh, there's a moon that happens twice in a um, in a sign, and then, of course, it travels. The signs change each year, but it wouldn't affect it at all. What it would do is just give us approximately 30 days, and then we'd move to the next, 30 days and move to the next, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Helene Lipson interviewed Matt Kahn on N5D Radio, and he publicly stated that the first wave of ascension would be September 27th, 2015. Of course, this is a day before the total lunar eclipse blood moon on September 28th, and also falls during a Mercury retrograde. What do the charts have to say about Matt Kahn's prediction? Yeah, uh, I, I, th- I think he's on to something here, because I have... Um Mine is the 27th. Uh, it's going to be late at night here. The mm-hmm. the eclipse will happen, of course, uh, on the 28th over uh, in Europe and, and uh, the, the countries on the other side of the planet. But, no, I have it on the 27th. And Aries okay. full moon, uh, and it's going to be the last one, what we've uh, experienced. And this is like an awakening. So, no, I, I definitely think there's something that could, could come of this. I think the other planets are saying it's time. So this is just an awareness. This is a pioneering or an awakening that – that we need to experience. So I think we just need to let it, um, as Uranus is trying to help us, as it's in Aries as well. So, mm-hmm. Well, that's pretty exciting. Yes. I, yeah. You know, the, the eclipses, Greg, and, and full moons and new moons and uh, cardinal signs, I don't talk about this a lot, but if you look whenever there's, like, uh, tremendous earthquakes or major events, they, they're happening in, you know, when uh, the new moons or the suns in Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn – and this is a total eclipse in Aries. So these are heightened times where we must take action or, or th- things are changing rapidly. 
Um, and uh, if you think about when the uh, sun goes through Aries, it's springtime for us. So it's it's a new it, you know there's a lot of new out here, and it's time to awaken. It's time to go. So I think he's spot on there. Mm-hmm. Now, as most people most people realize, the Federal Reserve is propping up the system with fiat currency via quantitative easing, which is basically the right to print as much money as it takes to keep the stock markets afloat and and to give the Fed the ability to use currency to perhaps replace the gold that was taken from Fort Knox years ago by the Clinton mm-hmm. administration, according to uh, the American Chronicle. And proof of that would be Germany demanding the return of over 1,400 tons of gold mm-hmm. from the Federal Reserve in 2013, with the Fed telling them that it'll take seven years to give it back to them, and you can be assured that the gold won't have any Germany stamps on it, and most right, likely right. it'll probably be filled with tungsten. Now, right. there, there is a point. There is a point to all this, Jim. Uh, <laughs> all United States, all United States debts need to be paid off by October 1st. Now, in my opinion the United States will most likely try some false flag event to delay paying back the money that's owed to these countries, or they'll collapse the U.S. dollar, which would create utter chaos, although it really needs to collapse, along with all forms of economic subservience and slavery um, Mm -hmm. to the dollar. Do the charts show anything about the end of September being ripe for a false flag attempt by the United States government or perhaps the death of the U.S. dollar besides Mercury being in retrograde and a blood moon at the end of September? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think they do. I think we're going to experience a uh, a period of time when uh, in, in, in astrology, Venus rules money, and it's going to go retrograde on the 24th of July. And it won't go back direct until around the 5th of September. So during that period, I think there's going to be a lot of manipulation, maneuvering, changing, um, better understanding of just what money is um, and how it's been manipulated. I think that total eclipse anywhere from after that, you know, uh, Venus going back direct to that total eclipse. Uh, I, I think it's it's game on. The lights are going to be shown into what's really going on, and I think that – uh, everybody's going to have the opportunity to, to realize just what's happened and just how um, manipulated this, the the money on this planet is, and that it's really it really has no value. Um, you have, there's nothing really to back it, and people are just printing it, and it's just been just a, a house of cards. Um, I think by the end of September, when we get to that 27th, 28th, uh, something will have happened, and it would not surprise me. Um, if it doesn't show itself around the 17th, Greg. Do you think so. that would be a false flag event, or do you think that might be the collapse of the the dollar, in your opinion, or both? I think yeah, we're going to have to have both. I think they're not. You know, I think if you remember before 9/11, when Donald Rumsfeld got on the 10th, yeah, he said we were 2.3 trillion missing, and then we have 9/11. I, it's going to be something like that. I mean, they're repetitive in how they do this stuff. It's just you just got to pick up what they're doing, but a lot of times we don't get to see it. Uh, it's shown later, but it's it's all repetitive, and so mm-hmm. it's it's going to be something like that. Um, and and the problem here, though, Greg, is you know we thought 2001 was bad in 2008. This this 2015, we we run seven year Saturn cycles. Um, yes. And Saturn's going into Sagittarius. This thing's you know this is the big one in my opinion. So mm-hmm. 2015 is a big one of. All right, they're they're gonna really like try to to uh, blow this thing up, and then when we get to the next seven year one, 2022, that's when Saturn, uh, Sagittarius will be well placed. I mean, uh, Saturn will be well placed, and uh, I, I think the next ones where you know from from 2015 to 2022, we're not dealing with this junk anymore. We're we're creating our own with something that makes sense, has worth, and uh, is gonna be good for all. So, mm-hmm. well, you know, come they're undone. pulling. Yeah, oh yeah, it does. Every it all has to collapse, and they're 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 yeah. pulling out all the guns right now out of desperation. Yes. yes, and that's why when you said something about outer space, that could that really could happen. So, and that it mm-hmm. could it, to me, it's going to be 
Uh, I mean, just just look around at all the chaos that's that every day. You just, mm-hmm. I mean, you see the shootings in Charleston, you see the shark attacks, and you see the yeah. money thing in Greece, and now we found out Puerto Rico's in trouble. And you know, I mean, it, there's just overload, and so that that tells you that they're going to bring. Not, it's not going to be one event. They're going to be one, two, three, four. There's going to be several events. You know. So it's not just going to be one big. It's going to be several. And I think they think they've worn people down, but I think they're going to get just the opposite, if that makes sense. So. Well, it's basically the grand finale at the fireworks. Yeah, that's true. Good way to put it. That, that's a really good way to put it. Absolutely. You know, I was I was at the beach, I think it was last weekend maybe, and the uh, U.S. Army had a little booth set up as you walked onto the beach, and there was four um, military people there. And so I, I stopped and I went up and asked them about Jade Helm. Only one out of the four understood and knew what Jade Helm was. And uh, so I explained it to them. And I asked them <laughs> off the record, and right. because I'm not mentioning names, it's still off the record. Um, right. Right. If it came down to it, if it came down to rounding up your own people, would you do it? And one guy said, hell no, he jumped right in. That he, and he didn't know anything about Jade Helm. He said, hell no, I'd never do that. And I smiled and nodded my head. And then the guy who I thought was probably their superior, he also said mm-hmm. that. He also said no. So, you yeah. know, I, I guess what it, when it comes down to it, either they're being told not to really say anything about it, they have to know something about it. Yeah. Or... uh or they're acting really stupid, and I'm, my my guess is that <laughs> they 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 were told not to really talk about it. But um, you know, right, when you right. look at what what's going on with all the the military equipment inside of a, a, a in these Walmart parking lots, there's a Walmart up the road in Brandon that was shut down. According to uh, the assistant manager, he said there's no paperwork filed for what they shut it down for, which was allegedly plumbing. He said, as of right. like a month ago, there was no paperwork filed. Period, and it's been sh- uh, shut down since then. So it makes you wonder what they're up to, what they're trying to pull. But ultimately, try to look at all this stuff fr- as an observer, from a observer perspective. And you know, the last the last thing you want to do is buy into the fear, you know. And uh, right. Right. what you what what people need to do is just go out and I hate telling people what they need to or shouldn't do and you don't have to do this but if you can um go out and just make people aware of what's going on because I think it's through awareness that we've prevented a lot of false flags if you look at for example Sandy Hook you know everybody talked about oh what a tragedy you know the school shooting and this and that well you know if you go to the FBI website the official web uh, FBI website for 2012 and look up to see how many uh, murders there were for manslaughter that year. Zero. Zero. Really? None. <laughs> yeah, it was one huge uh, false flag event that was conjured up to take away the, the gun rights, basically, here in the United States. So we're going to see other events like that. I have a feeling that the Charleston event was one of those. You know, And we've been seeing these time and time and time again. You know, virtually every major news item that comes up on TV is probably ha- probably has a basis in false flags. So, what do you think about that? Do you think you think this is going to be the grand finale coming up? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do think we're there, and I'm not a doom and gloomer. I just think that mm-hmm. uh, they drug it out, uh, and they're realizing that it's been drug. Every all this has been drug out. That, uh, and I think they've looked at the opportunities here for. Uh, you know, because Sagittarius, where we want to put things together, and so I think they looked at that, um, and so yeah, I think that there's nothing's by chance, and I think that um, there's the agenda is way bigger than what uh, most understand, and it's like you said, Jane Helm's probably a deterrent for what they really want to do, and it really, it really could be outer space. I've been saying that anytime uh, planets visit Sagittarius, it's about going beyond the you know the what's in front of you and so to me that's outer space Mm -hmm. that's you know that's that's exploration that's understanding of things that were you know not comprehended just weeks and months ago so i definitely think that um you know that that's definitely the possibility and that um all these events are planned i you know i I have no doubt about that anymore um it's Mm -hmm. it's, there's too much coincidence when they report quickly and they have all the information quickly, and they're on it quickly. You know, there's a problem. 
Um, oh, sure. It's like uh, because the they, BBC reporting the collapse of Building 7, seven. 10 mm -hmm. minutes before or whatever it was, yes. before it mm -hmm. actually collapsed. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, please. <laughs> You know. Anyway, a little further down the road, what can you tell mm -hmm. us about the meaning of the winter solstice this year? Um, I, you know, this this one's going to be, I think, more important than most because of the fact that um, a, as we move into, uh, and let me pull the, where the planets are because I was looking at that. I tried to go through the rest of the year. As we move into uh, this late, this fall and stuff, we have a lot of planets in the fall and winter sign so to speak so when we get the 21st or it's actually yeah 21st 22nd time frame we're going to have um a lot of planets in earth sign one two three four five earth uh one two three four five six planets in earth sign so mm -hmm. um it's going to be you know as we look at this it's about us and what can we do about the physical plane? What can we do and how can we change? Um, and then because we're now, you know, we're going to be three years removed, the Saturn cycles now will release itself to the next level of where it was of uh, bringing up the dirt and, and digging up what was underneath. Now it's putting it together. So I, I, this is going to be a one where I think there's going to be a lot of freedom. Um, and it's almost a relief, kind of like something you've been waiting and and you know waiting for an event to happen or you, you know you just don't feel right or and so finally when it comes you're almost relieved and i think by the time we get to sagittarius that'll be the case if that makes sense so mm -hmm. now we've talked a little about this before and a lot of people you'll see it on the internet that people are talking about 2017 as being this huge year uh metaphysically spiritually what can you tell us about that uh can you say that again i got somebody knocking on my door and i don't know who it is <laughs> Sorry, a lot of people have been talking about 2017 as being this really magical year, spiritually, metaphysically. And I was wondering, you know, we talked about this a little beforehand, and I'm sure there's new listeners right now. But what can you mm -hmm. tell us about that, and is there any further information that you have? For 2017? Yes. Yeah, I think that um, definitely going to be a time for us to... Um, expand and grow from a perspective of uh, we've seen the dark, we've seen the um, how bad things can get, and we made it through that. So it's going to be a, a chance for us to then get walk through that and transform. Mm -hmm. So I, I look at 2017 as the time of us truly like walking through and together because Jupiter will be in Libra. I think together we can then take, uh, after we make it through, take where we can move forward with this, if that makes sense. Well, Jupiter and Libra, that has you written all over it. Yes, yes. I'm I'm excited <laughs> for that. I have good years for me, but it's really where we, you know, have to work with others and you know and try to understand others and so I think that's going to help us tremendously if that makes sense. Mhm. Mm now, uh Alcyon is called the great sun, central sun. Most solar systems have at least binary solar systems. There are at least, you know, at least two stars and some have three stars or possibly more. So why isn't Alcyon considered part of a binary solar system for the Milky Way? I think it, it probably should. I think we're going to learn what's on the other side of the sun, if that makes sense. So what I think, think that as there? we... <laughs> what do I think, sir? I think that there's um, a parallel, a lot of parallels, if, if that makes sense. A lot of parallels. And so I think that's going to be like some of the what we start learning here as we move forward because nobody's considering that, you know, and I, I have a problem with that. Is there something on the other side that, you know, transiting that at the same speed or, you know, uh, it's parallel with what we're doing? And I think we have that because I think we need need binary. I think that has to happen to keep things balanced. It seems like it would be highly unusual to not be in a binary system, at least a binary I agree. I, I agree with that. So, Can you explain a little bit more? You said there's a lot of parallels on the other side of the sun. Can you explain a little bit more about what you mean by parallels? Yeah, I think if you, uh, let's just say, and I just try to take things with the basic form. Let's say that you're the sun, you're holding onto a rope, and you have a ball that you're swinging around you. Um, it gets its own force, and, and you know, you're the center. Uh, if, if you can uh, balance that out, um, I think that there's a lot. Uh, I don't. Know, I think that there's a um, 
a uh, lot more that can be um, a lot more power, a lot more um, consistency if if you have like on the same weighted end because you picture how much you have to pull and hold on that ball as it gets harder and harder. It seems like we would just in, be engulfed in ourselves. A binary system, they're working that out together, right? The two sons are working that out together, but it's in a consistent mm-hmm. form. And so I think that it just stays the that it stays. Um, I don't want to say out of our sight, but I think it stays balanced. That you know we we maybe not physically have the ability to see it, but it's there, and that's what keeps things uh, as they need to be. So you know, to me, the binary system makes uh, all the sense in the world, and it, it brings balance. It keeps things going, and from perspective that um, you know you're you're weighted enough to where the balance stays, and, and you know, and everything stays intact. Now, some people think that Nibiru is the binary of the Milky Way galaxy. In your opinion, could it be? Um, yes, it definitely could be. Definitely. Do you have any other opinions about Nibiru? Yeah, I, there's more than uh, – we're missing a couple planets, so I definitely think there's things out there. And if, if it, it may be Nibiru, it may not, but I think we're we're short two planets. And so I definitely think that's something that uh, has to be rectified at some point. Um, and I, I just think we need to just open to the possibilities. That, that may be what we find out here in the next few months because there's definitely more there than meets the eye. Well, you said we're short two planets. What happened? Um, well, uh, because they couldn't see them in ancient times, we um, – it had to take the visible planet so you could see out to Saturn. We couldn't see Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. And as we, I just think as we came to better understanding, maybe had better technology, we could see those. Um, and so, you know, uh, Mercury and Venus rule two signs. So I think we're too short. Do you and think it's possible so, that Tiamat might have been one of them? Uh, I'm not sure. What's the planet called? I've not heard of that. I, I've heard it called Tiamat, and also, you know, the asteroid belt had to have been one yeah. of them, you you would think. One could have exploded, absolutely. And, and you know, and we got the Earth that we kind of have that we don't, you know, not doesn't rule anything, but we live here. So um, there's definitely, there's definitely, one could have exploded and, and is in the asteroid belt. I, I definitely is a possibility, but we definitely have another one then that we need to find. It could be Nibiru, I don't know. It makes so. you wonder what kind of galactic war must have been going on if one of those planets were, was exploded. What happened and why we ha- actually have that asteroid belt going on? Yeah, it's almost like it's protecting or something, like we talked about earlier. Or preventing. Know? Or it could Pre- be preventing. It might be absolutely. preventing. We're not sure. Yeah. That, that, that's yeah. absolutely a possibility. So is, a is, possibility. is Pluto a planet, in your opinion? Um, yes, yes, in my opinion it is. I, I don't think it, move, it moves through the sky. Um, they want to give it an asteroid status, but I think with its uh, the plane that it takes, um, I definitely think it's a planet. Um, we, I think we have his, enough history that uh, you and I have done a show or two on that. I, I definitely think that it acts like a planet. I definitely think it has the making of a yeah. planet. It definitely has the energy of a planet. So mm-hmm. You said Too asteroid much, though, status. You said asteroid status. Um, I, yeah. I, what I heard was brown dwarf. Is there what? What's the difference? I'm sorry, there? brown dwarf. It was brown dwarf. I apologize for that. Yeah. Brown dwarf. Uh, Absolutely. That's okay. So, yeah. That's okay. Now it's it's been well documented that all the planets in our solar system are going through dramatic climate changes, and I have an article on n5d.com that's called current in- intergalactic. I'm sorry, current incoming. Intergalactic Waves of, of Energy, predicted in 1953. And uh, it has all the information on there, so check that out on N5D. But it shows you how every planet in our solar system is going through dramatic climate changes. And a good example of this would be the sun. Remember remember as a kid, the sun was the color of an egg yolk, and now it's white? It was yellow. In your opi- Absolutely, it was yellow. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. In your opinion, what's causing these dramatic climate changes? Um, I do think we run through periods, uh, cycles, like we talked earlier. But one of the things I'm thinking about, Greg, and you could say maybe I'm wrong here or whatever, but, I mean, we're sprayed here every day. Um, mm-hmm. 
geoengineering. And I'm wondering if it's not changed. Uh, I, I, honestly, what I wonder is if they're not building like a metal, like a like I have a projector screen TV that's got flakes of silver in it, and that really gives that high definition. It mm-hmm. just made me think when I when I got that screen, I started reading about. It, I'm thinking they're spraying aluminum and barium and all kinds of stuff up in yes. the sky. What if they're not creating a screen that they have to do it for, and where they could just show something? You know what I'm saying? And oh, they could just play it off the sky, and we watch it and think like it's a free. hologram, exactly uh, like you were beam. talking earlier. Yes, yes. And so I think maybe that has something to change the the color of the sun. But I also think the sun's changing because it definitely feels like it's way more uh, powerful right now. So you know, I think it's a combination of the two, but I definitely think we're in a cycle um, of change. And, and I don't know if they're trying to stop it or make it worse or what they're doing, but uh, that sun's so bright, mm-hmm. it's hard to go outside without sunglasses. And that was never the case when I was a kid, ever. Yeah, and from what I understand, I have an article on that too, where it shows you that you really shouldn't be wearing sunglasses because the sun's playing an important role on opening up your pineal gland. So even yeah. the reflection yeah. of the sun is helping that. So, you know, I, I know Michelle and I tend to not wear sunglasses very often. Occasionally we do because I have long hair. I use it more mm-hmm. to hold my hair up than anything else. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, as my, you were talking about chemtrails. I, I have an article on N5D where that I wrote about chemtrail flu fluoride where there's a couple of countries, I think it's Germany and France. I'm not sure which two it is offhand, but I believe it's those two. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, fluoride is illegal to put in their, their water over there. But what they're finding out is in these uh, chemtrail uh, residues, they're finding fluoride. They're putting fluoride in the air there to dumb them down as well. So if you live in either of those countries, and just check out the uh, the article on N5D2 beforehand. Don't, don't quote me on those two countries right now, but um, I think it's Germany and France. Um, I, I'd be kind of pissed about, you know, fluoride. I'm, I'm pissed about, you know, fluoride being in our water here. You know, I, I won't drink Absolutely. that crap. No, I, and uh, it, it's tragic for uh, people that aren't uh, – waking up as we move through this because of uh, just what they're doing to us and, and just our everyday travels. And now, you know, with the chemtrails, with the water, with stuff in the food, I mean, it's everywhere you turn. You, I mean, you had to be, you almost had to be your own scientist, your own attorney, your, you know, your own doctor, your own, just to make it through mm-hmm. this stuff. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's crazy the stuff they're doing to us. And to me, it's all in play that we're, you know, we're getting close to it's going to get fixed here. Um, because it can't get it, you know. We 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 know this ain't right, and it can't go on for our kids and grandkids and whatever. And so we're gonna fix it. And, and you, you and I talked about our where our planets were early and you know at birth, and and it's our time. And so we're gonna wake up and we're gonna fix this mess. So, well, you know, our air, water, and food supplies are all being poisoned. And even if you're not into conspiracy or anything like that, how can you be blind to the fact that? You know, GMOs are, are poison to, toxic to your body. Um, the yeah. air is being polluted massively through chemtrails. You know, yeah. you, as a matter of fact, they've even gone to the extent of video editing in, and you can see this on YouTube, how they're, they're editing in chemtrails into old movies, you know, just to program us into thinking that that's acceptable. Are they really? I did not know that. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's funny. You can see a couple old movies where where they show the before and after clips on them, and uh, right. yeah, they're actually editing in chemtrails, and it just astounds Absolutely. me that they'd go to such friggin' lengths to to right. do that. And our water supply, you know, with the fluoride and all the chemicals that are in there. Just read an article. I think I posted it on N Five D Alternative News today about how there's so much um, birth control in the water that. It's it's really plunging uh, the rates of birth, and uh, of course that's all part of the eugenics program and the and the right. depopulation program. You know they, they they want to obviously get rid of as many people as possible, and in the meanwhile keep them keep them keep them stupid on on fluoride. You know while poisoning our food and keeping us sick and uh, hurting our immune systems. So you know if right. if you can't see that our air, water, and food supplies are being poisoned, then maybe you deserve to drink fluoridated water. <laughs> well, and then we I'm need really, to talk honestly, about the vaccine. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. You know. Um, and so, just just listing those four or five uh, areas of light that we just talked about. How could you say they have your best interests? I mean, it's crazy. It's just it's beyond mm-hmm. crazy for me. So. Mhm. You know, I often wonder too about vaccines. I know that when we were kids, I think we only had to have a total of maybe ten. Who knows? I don't know. It wasn't that many back then. Right. But uh, right. now that it's like thirty, forty different vaccines that they have to have, I almost wonder. For example, with autistic children, if they're not actually some kind of maybe star child or uh, hybrid or whatever that was, uh, you know, once they get vaccinated, they they have advanced knowledge. But once they get vaccinated, it really does the exact opposite to them. I almost wonder if that's like a, you know, a a red flag to you show. You will not convince me otherwise than that. Yeah. I think you're spot on. I. They know that. I mean, these kids coming up are unbelievable. They are star children, and so I think that's what they're doing. They're they're uh, corrupting that pureness, corrupting that perfectness of that these kids coming in. You know. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. You know, and if I had known then what I know now, there's no way I would have vaccinated my daughter. Right. Right. It's it's you know I mean you can only do uh, do the best you can in the moment and so you, know, you hopefully you're not beating yourself up we all just do the best we can as we're moving through you know. So what we're seeing in California is that they're making it mandatory that you have to have vaccinations no ands ifs or buts if you want to go to school and what's happening now is that they're saying that there's a, a homeschooling is going to skyrocket because people are just saying no we've had enough of this bullshit. Right, and I uh, I can see that definitely going to rise everywhere, and I I just can't believe that uh, the politicians in that state got away with doing that without having a. It seems like they're one of the they try to be at the forefront on mm-hmm. keeping chemicals and things out of the food and out of the body, and you know trying to do the right thing. So that was amazing that state did that. Yeah, good for them. You know, I yeah. I, I I can see homeschooling being a huge wave in the near future. Plus. You know, if you look at the educational system, it's all about being inside that proverbial box from kindergarten right through retirement. It's it, You're right. staying inside the box. You're being fed state-sponsored propaganda in each yep. country, you know, no matter what it is, you know. And, I, you know, I've, I've written art- articles about this where, and this proves about the state-sponsored propaganda. In World War II, Prescott Bush, who was... George H.W. Bush's father and George W.'s grandfather, he was arrested for funding both sides of the war, but yet we never Mm -hmm. learned about that in school. Why? Because there's a Zionist agenda uh, behind all this stuff. And no, I'm Mm -hmm. not being anti-Semitic. Please don't go down down that road. If you want to learn more (laughs) about that, David Icke has a uh, wonderful video on Rothschild Zionism, and it, it explains everything. You know, I love the Jewish people as much as I love every other race on this planet. It has nothing to do with being anti-Semitic, but there is, and and I think I, I just listened to this again, his uh, interview, and he explained exactly all the people that are at the top of the uh, pyramid of control right now within like governments and stuff like that, major corporations, the mainstream media, so on and so forth. Virtually all of them, Rothschild Zionists. And uh, yes. if they only comprise maybe 2% of the population, what's the odds of them being in control of everything? And what are the odds of there being an, an agenda behind that, that our kids are forced to learn through you know, all this propaganda in school? Absolutely. I mean, it, it the, the the numbers add up, you know, the dots connect. So it's not, to me, it's not even, it's a no-brainer. I mean, just, mm-hmm. just connect the dots. It's pretty simple. Um, and, Imagine- and you're right, what? What, what are we teaching in school? I mean, they're not learning anything. Come on. Mm-hmm. They're, they're no, learning they're lies. That's all they're learning. So. Yep. Now, imagine going to school and learning about sacred geometry or astrology, you know, from <laughs> exactly. when exactly. you're like six years old. How cool would that be? How much power would the kids have? You know what I'm saying? They'd oh, have yeah. this, like, confidence and belief system, and they'd love to learn. And it's like, well, why would you not do that? Why would you not put them in the best possible scenario to to become – an individual is going to be responsible and, and you know, mm-hmm. uh, capable as they as they age. 
Well, it's all about being inside the box. The box is a cube. The cube is represented as a representative of Saturn, and Saturn is part of the mm -hmm. control system. It all makes sense. Yes. Yes. Fairly, fairly quickly, it makes sense. So. Mm -hmm. So this is an interesting thing. It's about Hopi prophecy, and uh, I don't know if you know everyone listening is familiar with that. And once again, just go to N5D in the upper right-hand corner. There's a search box. Type in Hopi prophecy, and you'll find out a lot about it. But the and all all there's nine signs that they said will come to fruition, and uh, so far all eight signs have came to fruition. And according to Hopi prophecy, the ninth and last sign says. You will hear of a dwelling place in the heavens above the earth that shall fall with a great crash. It will appear as a blue star. Very wow. soon after this, the ceremonies of my people will cease. And I'm sure this is talking about the blue star Kachina. So what does that mean in terms of astrology? Well, you know, I think there's a... Astrologically, as well as every other uh, entity, their cycles, and so, you know, I think that the heavens have always provided us the answers. I think the, the you know, just looking up, we're all. It, it's just amazing when you look up to the sky. So I think that there should definitely, it, it should end that way as well. Does that make sense? You you begin and then end the cycle that way. So uh, it makes sense to me that as you know, you live your life as you've lived many lives here. Um, the completion should be something like that to um, to the end of, of whatever it is we are, where we're trying to go. But that doesn't mean we're all going to die, right? I mean, that just means that's the end of the prophecy. And he said, "Is they what they say is that the end of they would teach us they know, or would they? How did, how did you end that?" It, it said, uh, "Very soon after this, the ceremonies of my people will cease, will stop." Uh, yeah, I, and I thought, wow, I, I don't know if that's a I, – I would assume it's a po positive thing. And what a lot of yeah. people think that the blue scar uh, – the, the blue kachina was, was Ellen in. Yeah, coming in, absolutely. Um, so it so. ends a cycle. Um, mm -hmm. But then another one begins in some way, shape, or form. So maybe it ends our physical existence, I guess. I'm okay with that. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> I'm ready to become a light being. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> now, this might not pertain to astrology, but a lot of people are hearing, and it's been reported all around the world, there's numerous videos on YouTube about it, they're hearing these trumpet-like sounds all over the world. What do you think is causing that? I'm uh, I'm perplexed by that because you know we have what we call the, fr the fracking and we got CERN now and we've got uh, you know supposedly the ocean temperatures warmer so does that mean more volcanic activity or is it global warming I think the Earth's going through uh, a tremendous change that's needed and necessary and I think it's just trying to right itself or, or get itself back to being healthy and. To me, uh, I've heard. I don't know if you, I've listened to some of the videos. They sound the same whether they're over in Russia or they're in, you mm -hmm. know, Europe or South America. They, they sound the same. So to me, it's something. The world's kind of just like it's an alarm system or something. I, that's what I feel it is. I don't know what's your opinion. Well, I'm glad you asked because uh, Dr. Simon Atkins provided uh -huh. a very interesting uh, ex explanation for that. He said that it's the dimensions starting to shift. Okay. That very and I well think could that, be then. Imagine that. If, you know, the next time you hear one of those, bam, it's the fifth dimension. Right. I'll, I'll you know, think another, about that. That's interesting. Another interesting thing he brought up was about CERN, and I've written several times about this on articles on N5D, and he's, you know, we're being told, you know, by the mainstream media that CERN is being used to discover the the God particle. And he said no, and it, it, it could be, but there's a bigger reason that CERN is being used, and uh, that's to prevent these incoming energies that he's talking about that are going to be coming on September 17th from entering our solar system and progressing our our, our evolution. So I thought that was pretty interesting too. 
I'm in that field. Uh, I'm on that side of the uh, equation. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, I have a, 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 a just a what if question for you. Okay. If our consciousness evolves to where we live outside of time, and because astrology is based on the cycles of time, what do you see yourself doing doing in a world without time? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I um, <clears throat> I think that's where you uh, find the moment, and that's the important thing to you, if that makes sense. And and so it doesn't matter about tomorrow or yesterday. I think it's the moment, and that's really I think the lesson that we're all trying to um, uh, I think come to as we're living in this uh, in this so-called time strap place because of the physicalness of it. So to me, it's just finding the moment and staying in there. And to me, that would be just perfect because when I stop and do cherish the, whether it's the bird, I'm outside and I hear the birds or watch the dogs or see kids play. And I'm just in that moment. There's no better happiness, if that makes sense. Um, that's that's it, living without time right there. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. Um, and it, it's not about how much money I have in the bank or what job I have or what I did or didn't mm-hmm. do. No, I'm in the moment. I'm watching and just enjoying what's in front of me. So, exactly. Yourself? You know when? Um, <laughs> I didn't expect you to ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> you threw that one. You doing? threw me to the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what would I be doing in a world without time? Well. Probably the same exact thing I'm doing right now. Um, oh, I don't so think nice. I'd change, honestly. You. you know, I'm here. I know I'm here to help humanity in whatever way I can, and to help raise consciousness. Um, it's funny. I don't know if I told you this story before. You know, we've talked so much, but I had this dream one time. And it's kind of funny. Um, I dreamt that I came here from 26 years into the future, and I had to come back. Because the global mass was uh, the, crit- the critical mass was uh, too low, not, not enough people were awoken. And when I sent myself back from the future, someone someone asked me, "Who are you?" I said, "I'm a master copy of myself." So apparently, I cloned myself to come back here and help consciousness awaken. Um, I thought that was pretty interesting. So I guess I in a world awesome. without time, I would send myself back in time to help humanity even more. There you go, because the Lord knows it needs it. Yes, and there's probably more <laughs> I could do if I did it again. And I, I try. I'd like to think I'm doing all I can, but you know, it's, it's like I, I've told Michelle. You know, if if I were to, to take a day off and not do anything, I would just the number one thing I would feel is how many people I was unable to reach that day instead of actually taking a day and saying, screw it, I need a day to myself. I can't, I can't do that. I have to put humanity ahead of me for now. And, uh, you well, know, maybe down the road. I, I feel like you've hit another gear. I mean, it's just amazing the output of stuff. That, I mean, it's just every day, and you guys are all over it. And I don't catch them all, but, man, I've, you've given me plenty to be able to have access to. <laughs> Um, and <laughs> you guys are just relentless, and I love it. So um, you're not – trust me, when you get wherever you need to go and whoever we have to answer to, you're not going to have to answer too much. I can tell you that. So, Well, you know, I, I appreciate that, Jim. Thank you. That's – you know, and speaking of time, what does, like, n- uh, numbers – synchronicities mean to you, like 1111? Or do you see a certain number that pops up all the time for you? I – um I wake up a lot at night, and I never wake up where there's not two digits that match, whether it's, you know, 1222 uh-huh. or 11, you know, 1155. Or, and so I'm always looking at that like, all right, you were supposed to wake up. What were you doing or what are you thinking? Or, and so I always try to just, you know, become very aware of my environment because I think that's what those numbers are screaming to me is become aware, stay in the moment. Um, I agree. You know, just feel, see. And so I don't, you know, I know a lot of times people look up 44 is an angel, 11 is that. I just let myself just be in those moments, if that makes sense. And mm-hmm. I don't try to, you know, I don't try to do too much or I don't try to not, you know, I definitely don't not do anything. I just try to become super aware in the environment. But it's funny how every, I, don't have, I don't wear a watch and I rarely look at the clock. But when I do, the numbers are, you know, they have some synchronicity to them. How about yourself? Definitely. Well, I, 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 the first thing I think about when I see a synchronicity is, well, the first thing I say is thank you, universe, to myself, or sometimes aloud. 
uh, out loud, but um, I also think about what it is that I'm working on generally or what I'm doing. I might be at the beach and grounding myself in nature, and I just try to understand the significance of what I'm doing at that particular moment. Now, there was one time my daughter and I, we had these, they're like friendship bracelets where they have like three different, three little colored stones on them and you put them around your wrist and each one means something different. And uh, so I, I had these three little green ones on my wrist or this one one friendship bracelet with three little green rocks on it. And I put my intentions into it and they say that once it falls off your wrist, that's when your intentions will come true. But this one night, I, I'll never forget it because I woke up at exactly one eleven and went back to sleep. I woke up again at 2.22 and just shook my head thinking, this is crazy. And then I woke up again at 3.33, exactly. Oh, my goodness. And each, each one of these were one hour and 11 minutes off from each other. I'm thinking, right. what are the odds of that? And I was just like shaking my head and I looked down and the bracelet had fallen off. So, you know, wow. and that's what Universe was trying to tell me. So, you know, it, I, I thought that was pretty cool. So anyway, uh, I have believe. one last I have one last question for you, Jim. Okay. And right. w- one question I often ask people is if there was no such thing as money, what would you be doing with your life? And for myself before you before you have a chance to ask me <laughs> you're gonna beat I'd, me to it <laughs> yeah i'd have a large orchard of fruit and i'd put a sign outside telling people to help themselves and to take a little extra if they know someone who's hungry and i'd also work with children in helping them find their true divine reason for being here there you go there and of course go. if if there's no such thing as money everyone listening i promise you i'm still doing in 5d i'm going to do this until i I transition okay. into a light being. I'm not going to say till I die, until I transition into a light being. There you, you guys <laughs> can always count on us here on N5D, but this is outside of that. If there's no such thing as money, definitely, I would love to do all three of those. What about you? Uh, I, I would have to say I'd, I'd probably have it limited to one, and that's astrology. I I feel like I have done this in the past. I've enjoyed it, um, and I, I think that it, it changes not only my life, but the people that I do astrology with and and for, and um, I would definitely introduce it to the to the children because I think the children. Oh, that'd be great. Know, yeah, and and we just don't do that. And I, I would love to, absolutely love to introduce it and and have the children know it from a young age because I think they're they're in line with it when they're you know ch- uh, early in in their life here, one to four, one to five, and I, th- mm-hmm. I just think they do awesome with that. Well, you know, I, I don't love money, money. Work, you know. Exactly. I I, I can't yeah. wait until we live in a world without money, and yeah. I love yeah. working with kids. I was a uh, a child and family therapist while I started. At the time, I was still doing the website too. And that, at one point, I said, "You know what? I'm just going to do the website." And as much as I love to be in a child and family therapist, they pay you in sunshine here in Florida, and it's, it was really hard to exist. But um, <laughs> right. <laughs> the thing is, I I love. I, I love working with kids, and I know that that's one of my gifts because I can be at a beach and a, a random child's going to run up to me and say, Hi, mister, and or d- d- they'll walk by all these other people and not look twice, but they turn around and look at me. And inside, I'm sending them a message just saying, Hi, little indigo. <laughs> right, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, this one kid, it's funny. There, uh, one time I was uh, walking on the beach. I do this walk of gratitude. And uh, I'm walking, and there's a a little boy and a little girl playing, and they were probably about four or five years old. And this little boy has like, it was like a ping pong ball. And I was walking by, and he threw threw it at me. (laughs) me. I looked at him, and he just smiled at me. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I I acknowledge you. I know that you're here. (laughs) Continue doing your work, and, you know, just smiled. But, you know, what what your answer was told me that you've, you found your true life purpose in being here, astrology, and that's that's awesome. Yeah, no, I absolutely have, and I and I definitely enjoy it, and I I have learned to just let it resonate. It's kind of like you walk along the beach; they'll they'll come to you. It's okay, and and that's why mm-hmm. I don't push a lot out there, you know, because they'll come. Just just keep doing your part, and it's all going to be fine. So yes, and uh, always try to help people, you know. Yes, always. 
there's money or not, it doesn't matter. It just help everyone because we're all in this together. So, absolutely. absolutely. Well, that's all the questions I have, Jim. Is there anything that we didn't cover? I, th- I think we did a pretty good job with all this. I, you know, I, ho- I hope that uh, the message, Greg. Sometimes you go back and listen and. Um, I think you and I are definitely just we go with what we feel and think, but I hope that the message people uh, took from tonight, or maybe we can clear that up at the very end here, is things have to come undone because they can't go yes. on. Um, they're not they're not good for for the masses, so uh, they need to unravel. Don't you know? Don't don't try to stop that. Just become more of who you are. Know uh, what matters to you from your core, and and I think if everybody stays there, we're all going to be just fine. So. It's nothing good that's going to be too great for any of us. We just must know and, and you know understand and just be who we truly are. So, I completely agree. The system is broken. It's unsustainable and needs to collapse so we can build it back in humanity's best interest. Now, there's a good chance we may take a, a small step backwards for a short, very, very, very short period of time. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a huge leap forward, and it's going to make these days that we're living in right now – seem like the stone age so once again no fear you know create awareness help your neighbors love everyone respect everything that's all i can tell you at right now but uh don't don't live in fear don't allow the fear to get you because we're, we're on the winning end of this and it's going to happen real soon yes absolutely greg well said so mm-hmm. um, i appreciate so you before, allowing me on and oh go ahead sorry oh gosh oh no no i i i i, I love having you on you're my favorite guest on N5D Radio. <laughs> well, I, I can't. I mean, everybody around me it knows me. I, I talk about you. I just light up. And I said, me and Greg just click. I love the man. So you do a heck of a job, and I just appreciate everything you do. And I know it's sometimes it's uh, may it's tireless, and it may seem like it's not working, but I'm telling you, it's working. So just keep it up. You're, you're doing Indeed. an amazing job. So. Indeed. I mean, we must have been brothers in a previous lifetime. I'm telling you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yep. So, so before we go, why don't you tell our listeners how to reach you? Yeah, you can get me uh, on my channel, Panther Jim 1995. Um, the uh, I, I do the new and full moon, so uh, you, you can just text me through or email me through that, or you can get me at uh, my channel, ypi2012.com. Uh, you can get me through email there. I do chart readings um, over the phone, and I do also – I'll just – do a recording and I send it to you the audio version through the email. So um, definitely available. I have time in the next couple months, so uh, it's not my calendar isn't wide open, but there's time, and I appreciate you uh, letting me plug myself here. So oh, definitely. You know, I, I keep telling you, you need to get a Facebook page. Uh-huh. You know, so <laughs> you can. I I think I think you could reach a lot more people. Yeah, I'll have to definitely consider that. So I, I've stayed away, but I probably should because it's it's time. I mean, we, we, we need to do everything we can and have no regrets. So you, you're probably right. I agree. So I'll, I'll look at that. From you, I'll look at that. Awesome, awesome. And, uh, of course, I'll be the first person you add. There you go. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so to everyone listening, I, I highly recommend – subscribing to uh, Jim's YouTube channel. That's Panther Jim 1995, one word. Type it in there. You'll 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 find him and subscribe to his channel cuz it's always awesome information. It's just it's everything that we're talking about right here tonight. So, uh you know, if you, if you have a YouTube uh subscription, uh an, an account, definitely subscribe to his channel. As always, time flies when we do a show together. It's been an amazing pleasure having you on in 5D Radio, Jim, and hopefully we can bring you back in a few months. That'd be great. I, I'm always honored, Greg, and uh, you uh, keep up the good work, so I love it. All right, appreciate it. Right, and looking we'll, we'll forward to having another show. All right, brother, take care now. So yep, care. until the next time, I wish everyone love, peace, good health, abundance, and everything that's good in life. Namaste, everyone.